So, Coach Hayes, could you confirm those starters for us, please? Uh, yes, uh, Amari Scottery, uh, Carilla Barnes, I'm sorry, Cammy Williams, Casey Rollerson, Mariah Gatson, Kiara, Kiara Wagner, Wagner, yeah, and Sarah. I'm sorry, Sierra Cotton. Sierra Cotton. Uh -huh. Those are your starters tonight, and uh, we're going to see them take on the Lady Falcons. And one of the things I always wanted to see this team improve from the challenges this team faced a lot was always going through some some ebbs and flows in the offensive side of the game, mm -hmm. and it sometimes affected them defensively. Uh -huh. So when you start talking about them, them finishing. That's what you're talking about, them getting at a level where this is who we are every time we hit the floor. So standing in center court, ready to jump it up. We have Escoffi and also Brandy Harad ready to jump it up. And here we go. Tip controlled, end up by the Lady Eagles. Coming to the front court now is Gatson. Gatson, as the Falcons open up in a 3-2 zone, working the ball around. The perimeter trying to find a catch. It's going to be, looks like it's going to be stolen that time into the hands of Rihanna Hill, who drives to the basket, cannot score off the steal. She misses it. Rebound pulled down and controlled by the Falcons. That's what I'm talking about, finish. You know, being able to know you're going to get the contact, but don't focus on the contact, just focus on finishing. Okay, Reagan Carey missed the shot. And the rebound is going to be controlled by the Lady Eagles. And here we go. All tied up at nothing right now. 7-12 to go in the first. Maurice Prince and Director of Operations Shannon Hayes on the call this evening. Again, the Falcons in a 3-2 zone ball thrown. Oh, tie. It's going to be a turnover. You Second. Know, and we're looking at a different Harding prep team this year. Uh, you know, most of the girls uh, transferred over to Douglas. Uh, they left with their coach, so you got a new coaching staff as well as a different different look here. So uh, uh, Donnie Lewis, his first year as a coach here, he was with our boys last year. So, you know, he's getting his, his uh, head, st head coaching start. So proud of him and glad he's getting the opportunity. Rihanna Hill fires up a three-point shot. That shot no good. Rebound by the Eagles. Timeout called by the Eagles. And whenever you have a program, you got to come in and have an impact. And it's nice to see, as they say, the Falcon ties yes, that go yes. beyond the walls. If, if Not everybody's going to be with you a long time, but you have a chance to see some guys grow and expand their game. You know, we talk about Coach Jeffries is over at Putnam Heights. Now we wish him, Putnam City, excuse me, Putnam City. No we, 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 Putnam City knows we wish him well. And everybody. Jeffrey Smith. Yeah. He's in Lawton. Right, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so it's not uncommon. When you are part of a winning tradition, you want—I mean, you want other people to want your quality coaches. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, that, if nobody that, wants you, then what? <laughs> exactly. Hey, I'm—I'm I'm proud. I'm like, you know, that—that uh, that means that what we're doing at Millwood is good, and people want to allow their opportunities and uh, their programs to succeed. All right, coming back in motion, Gatson, point guard, running point, going to bounce, pass it over to the right wing, trying to get the ball inside, going to be stolen again by Rihanna Hill. And now it's going to be stolen on the backside. And back and forth action. Now the ball back in the hand of Vinay Atchison. And she scores an easy deuce there. A little frantic there, but nice pass by Rihanna Hill. Yeah, you know, and like I say, that's a good good opportunity. We, 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 still, we still all got our telegraphic passes and stuff. We got lucky on a few uh, opportunities. Raquel Hutt with the steal. Brandy Harat finishes. Nice, nice steal and go. By the Falcons, 4-0, 5.57 to go. Bounce pass over to the left wing. Now ball into the corner. Short corner jump shot, no good. Rebound, and the shot goes up by Escoffi, but shot is no good. She'll go to the line shooting two. Who was that foul called on? That was on Brandy Harad. Now, you one of the- to call that a foul. <laughs> well, gotcha. First team foul. Escoffi misses free throw, free throw number one. So 4 nothing is a score. One of the things you wanted to see also in evolution of the game is going from last season. Escoffi goes one of two at the line. 4-1 is the score, 5.46 to go. Is that you wanted to see Harad also be more cautious on the foul or the foul selection that she chooses when she wants to get aggressive. Mm -hmm. And she spins inside. Go ahead. Yeah, and, and like I said, I mean. Turnover. Just, just more toughness. 
Um, you know, she They're going to keep whacking at her because she's long. Um, she's got to be able just to secure that ball, focus on finishing. All right, ball into the front court now. Ball to the right wing. Three-point shot from the right wing. Shot no good. Rebound. Pulled down by the Lady Eagles. The three-point shot attempt was by Cotton, by the way. Gatson cross-court over to Wagner. Back up top to Gatson. That pass is going to be stolen by Harad. Harad, Euros to the basket. She doesn't get it to fall, but she's going to go to the line shooting two. Foul's going to be called on Gatson. Yeah, and I haven't seen that one before, so that's a new, that's a new look for her. So, you know, she usually, I knew she was going to at least do a step and a Euro, but I thought she would continue on the left side, but she went to the right. And that's evolving, and, and, and that's going to help her in her game even as she transitions to the next level, uh, just getting stronger with her right hand and, and being more versatile. I mean, everybody loves a left-handed uh, player. I mean, they're, they're just, just phenomenal. Now, in basketball, it creates so many opportunities because most folks are used to seeing and guarding most right-handed players. So Rod misses her first free throw, sets up, shot is up, shot number two goes down. One of two for Harad, 5-1 is the score. 4.52 to go in the first quarter. Falcons going to pick up at half court, extending the press. Ball into the corner, back to the left wing. Ball around the perimeter, looking for some space to operate. Gatson almost loses it in traffic. And this time it's going to be a jump ball situation. And it will be Lady Falcon basketball. Good tie-up, good recognition. Yeah, uh, I mean, I just I want to move their feet more. Move, move their feet, you know. They, they get a lot of fouls because they reach. And uh, I tell them, put their flash waters up and move their feet. That's, that's what one of them will be able to do. Just continue to move your feet make them work. And they actually set up to the elbow. Reagan Carey cross court over to Harad. Harad looks at a three, shoots the three. And she is the three and drains it. Good ball movement. I like the rotation. Uh, they're not selling for one pass and a shot. And so uh, good, good job. Good offensive series. All right, ball to the right wing now. Inside to Escoffi. Escoffi on Harad. Harad affects the shot. She can't get it to fall. Harad fires it inside. Carey wasn't mm. expecting it. Going to be a turnover there. And that's one of those young players for Reagan Carey. She wasn't expecting it, but she had a clear path to the basket. Yeah, yeah, she did. So on that particular play, it will be Lady Eagles ball. Falcons up by seven. 3.50 to go. Ball's going to get deflected. Rihanna Hill gets it, tries to throw it up to Anae Atchison. She chases it down, and then that pass is going to be deflected out of bounds. Good hustle back by the Eagles on that play. And, you know, coming from, you're going to see a lot of principles that you had mentioned the coach that he employs, and one of them is getting back on the other end, and that's something that the Falcons do all the time. Yeah, and, and like I say, I mean, when something's open when you and it, you, it's late, you still try to force it. Sometimes we get some turnovers. We've got to realize that window is very it's, it's quick. It's open and it's not, and you got to be able to understand how to be able to get it in or not. So we got lucky. It, it came off one of the, uh, the Eagles players' heads, so we got to continue to keep the ball. Okay, Reagan Carey chucks out of the game, and Amani Atchison is in. So driving inside, and A with the spin move, and then a beautiful running hook shot to the basket, and she drops it in for two. Yeah, she's, she's getting, even though she, she's small to the ground, she still continues to think she's a tall warrior. So I, I, like, I like her confidence in that. All right, ball works to the right wing, driving inside, shots no good, rebound. Goes up and down and in for Williams, who scores the ball for the Eagles there. 10 to 3. Ball in the left wing. Ball to the center of the court to Harad. Left wing. Back over to Hill. Right wing. And they fires up a three. And that three-point shot is pure. Nice. nice assist by Rihanna Hill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like I say, that's our game. That's what I'm excited about to see how she continues to be a, a, a point guard, but also a leader and be able to step up and, and, and be more confident in her shots. All right, getting the ball inside. Brandy Harab with great defense. Contact underneath the lane. The foul is going to get called for a foul here. It's going to be foul called against Rihanna Hill. Second team foul. She's going to send number four, Williams, to the line shooting two. Williams, first shot, back rims no good. It's called blocking out. That's twice that that ball has gone over the rim. 
And instead of watching, we need to find a man, put a body on, block it out. Just fundamentals. Williams misses the second shot. Harad pulls it down. Harad early on has six points. And then there's going to be a turnover by the Falcons on that one. So back to the Lady Eagles. Here comes Gatson across the timeline. 2.33 to go. 13-3 is the score. Thank you for joining us tonight. Ball on the right wing. Ball up top. Gatson resets it. Nay, as the Falcons have switched to man-to-man -to -man defense. Reagan Carey, who's checked back into the game, knocks it out of bounds. And she's in for Raquel Hunt. Gatson drives inside, goes with the runner. Contact's going to be made. Foul's going to be called. Again, driving inside. Foul's going to be called on Harada. That's, That's foul two. number two on Harada. Yeah. So, again, one of the things that we, you want in Brandy Harada's evolution of the game is got to know when the, yes. the best time to take the foul is Gatson knocks down free throw number one. And that, I, which, it's not a matter of which foul that you thought was best. It's just both of them were in situations where the Falcons really didn't need to foul. Right, and, and really and truly when you're, when you're in a situation where your bench is kind of low, you know what I mean, they're, they, they're about eight, nine, and so it's like trying to realize you need to be on the floor and uh, you got to play smart. Is it, is, it, is it being too overly aggressive? Is that what this is? Or is it just, as you said, fundamentals, being out of position? What do you think that is? It's, it's, it's here. It's, it's all mental. Everything is not a block. You know, it, it's more about really and truly, if you've done your homework, you've done your scouting report, their, their shooting percentage is very low. I mean, the score, the score is 4-13. to 13. They've had several shots. The majority of their shots have never even hit the rim. So why would you block a shot? when they haven't got a high percentage of making it. Right. So you, you got to think of those things when you're, when you're playing on your defense, when, you, when you're saying, okay, is this really worth it? Is it really worth the chance to block a shot? You know, let them shoot the ball and just block out. And we'll see if Coach Albert ap approaches that. Three-point shot attempt by Rihanna Hill is no good following the timeout. Rebound pulled down by the Lady Eagles. That timeout was brought to you by A-plus lawn service. It's a great time to make that lawn turn Blue, get that blue stuff on your lawn so it'll be green next year. Shot up by Cotton is no good. Rebound pulled down by Carey. Carey goes coast to coast. She can't score it. Ball's gonna get deflected out of bounds. Yeah, I, I, I like her up game. I mean, she, she continues to be able to evolve, just a freshman. And so her first year playing in, 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 uh, in this league. And so uh, I'm, I'm just liking her confidence and her willingness to try to work hard, you know. All right, so Raquel Hunt comes back into the game for Brandy Harad, and then Carey fires up a three-point shot from the left corner. Turnaround shot by Rihanna Hills, no good, but she got the rebound. And back to the offensive end. Bounce pass over to the left wing. Nice give and go to Gatson, who cuts to the basket. Shot no good. Going to end up being a tie-up situation, or are they going to call it out of bounds? Yeah, I think he called it out of bounds. I think uh, Reagan was out of bounds when uh, they had the tie-up. So, All right. So 1.14 to go before the end of the first. Falcons up by nine. Inbound, turnaround shot by Scoffy. She's going to get fouled. That time she's going to get fouled by Reagan Carey. Team foul number four. Foul situation, four team fouls for the Falcons, one team foul for the Eagles. As Escoffee knocks down free throw number one, cutting the lead down to eight. Escoffee's got good form at the free throw line, Coach Hayes. Yeah, she does. She, she does. And she knocked it down, lead down to seven. Here come the Falcons. And they cross the timeline, setting up the O. Man-to-man -man defense of the Lady Eagles. She tries to fire it inside. It ball ends up in the hands of Reagan Carey. She's going to get fouled by Gatson as she gets it up high off the, off the glass. Yeah, and, and that really was the baseline uh, referee's call. I think he was out of, out of position on that because that definitely was a foul. Um, you know, we're, we're, we still got to continue to finish our shots. I don't feel we're getting as calls like we should. But, 
you know, being in the right place at the right time and staying aggressive is, is what I really like, like I say, about this team. But playing smart, you know, knowing your passes and paying the passing. All right, Reagan Carey misses foul shot number two. Picked up this time by the Lady Eagles. And I was about to do the broadcaster's jinx. I was about to say I like the new crop of, crop of new Falcons that can shoot free throws. <laughs> Scuffle underneath the basket. Ball ends up in the hands on a rebound by Reagan Carey. And then going to the basket, Rihanna Hill, she can't get it to fall. But she gets her own rebound there. And that pass should have went to her name. I mean, she should have pushed the ball on up the floor and passed the ball. And that's what Coach Dave was telling her as well. You had a man in front of him. You looked right at her and never even passed the ball. 14-6 to go. 30 seconds left in the first quarter of tonight's contest. We're on the northwest side. Nice no-look nice. pass to Escoffi. Driving into the lane. She's going to go back to the free throw line. Foul's going to be called on Imani Atchison. Team foul number five. Scoffy at the free throw line. Yeah, that, that's something that I've noticed that we, we, we get caught looking a lot. You know, and, and, and that's something we definitely got to work on. We got exploited in, in, the, in the Kansas tournament, uh, give and go. You know, and it's like we backing up and allowing that, that person that, to cut right in front of us and get the ball back and lay it up. So 19.4 uh, seconds. More than likely the Falcons will play for one. As an A comes at the timeline, standing on the left side of the court. She's just above the circle, and then finally a reach-in foul is going to be called by on Cotton. And I'm pretty impressed, you know. Coach Lewis got these girls uh, playing hard, playing confidence. Um, you know, they only got three fouls. They, they're playing under control and uh, doing a really good job. Bounce pass into Rihanna Hill. Rihanna tries to hit the step back. Escoffi with the steal. And then Ane with the ball rolling around on the ground. And it looks like no one's going to get a shot up. As time expires at the end of the first, it's 14-7, Falcons on top. You're listening to Millwood Falcon Basketball brought to you by SSM Health at St. Anthony and Love's Travel Stops and Country Stores. Looking at how the teams, how the teams broke down for just that first quarter, the Lady Eagles really did their work from the free throw line, shooting five of 10, 50% from there. They've only had four shots from the floor, or five shots, five field goal attempts overall in the game. One from three, the others are uh, two point shots, but they're one of four from the floor. And so when you look at it, they're 20% shooting. So the Falcon defense has been good, but that free throw line, because the Falcons are fouling, are giving them great opportunities. Defense ain't been good. No, no, defense has not been good. Because if defense was smart, you basically five of their seven points is on the free throw line. So that means you're not playing smart defense. You're basically swatting at everything like they're making it. And they're not making any shots. They've only made one basket, pretty much. And if it wasn't for their free throws, the score would be 14 to 2. Right. You know? Now, from the Falcons' perspective, in field goals, they are 5 of 13 shooting 38% in the game so far. Two of four from three, 50%. Three of nine from two, 33%. And the Falcons are 50% from the free throw line, two of four. So when we start looking at it in their 14 points, it's been impressive. How many what, turnovers do they have? Oh, sure, I can give you that. As we're back to live action here, the Falcons and four turnovers in the first. So ball shot up by the Eagles, no good. And the ball carries around and ends up in the hands of Raquel Hunt. And they try to fire the ball inside to Amani Atchison. And Amani's got to do a better job putting her hands up high to give herself the target to throw the ball to. Yeah, but Raquel's eyes was focusing on her the whole time. <laughs> so the defender got a chance to play them both if she would have basically focused on the, on the goal and then gave her a no-look pass, you know. And they inside oh, with the man. razzle and the dazzle. <laughs> Showing all the tools in the toolbox right now goes Ane Atchison. That drops, very impressive. Drops a two-point shot in. And Ane has nine of the Falcons' 16 points. 
that's impressive in its own right. It is, it is, it is, definitely. That means, because you know we're always looking for Brandy to be your top scorer, um, and that's good because that takes that pressure off of Brandy. And like I say, with her being in foul trouble and having to kind of sit her down for a little bit, this is great for her to step up and be able to show she can be a leader of this team. All right, the Eagles throw the ball away, so now Harad's back in. Starting off, the Falcons on the floor. Hunt, Atchison, Atchison, Imani and Ane. And Imani fires up a three-point shot. Contested with Gatson all over her, but she drains it. And just come back down the court and don't say nothing. Like it was just, you know, hey. Exactly. <laughs> that was one of those, no, 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 no. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yes. She knocked it down. All right, going to work. Gatson drawing the attention of Raquel Hunt. Firing the ball to the left wing, inside to Escoffi. Escoffi, double pump. Uh, <laughs> Hangs shot. in the air and knocks it down. Good shot. But what, what now, with that, with that basket, what happens is when you play in this zone, you don't stretch it. And so, Kel's got to stay home and be able, because every time she steps out there farther, it opens that middle part of that, of that zone and allows them to attack. Short corner jump shot on an assist from her sister. Imani knocks it down, and she's off to a quick start this quarter. She's got five in the quarter right now. All right, Raquel Hunt covering as the Falcons are in a 3-2 zone once again. Gatson at the top, trying to draw a screen, going to hand it off to Cotton. Cotton resets the Eagle offense, tries to find a crease, cannot. The Falcon defense has been stout on this possession. Gatson drives inside, tries to go with the runner shot. No good, deflects it out of bounds. It will be Lady Eagle ball. Defense is a lot better on that possession. I think they're still doing too much stretching and moving. A lot of that, lot of that zone to let you rest. A lot of that zone to be able to pack it in and force them for an outside shot. And you know what I mean? So you're, you're basically making them to bring it inside. And All number right. one is pretty good. Ball's going to be stolen that time by Harad on the inbounds. She gets it up to an A, and she finishes in the air as she hangs and drops it in nicely. Assist by Brandy Harad on that one. 23-9, and A. Atchison in double digits with 11 first-half points. Ball cross-court over to Reagan Carey, almost deflected from Gatson. Gatson steps into a three-point shot. Back rim's no good for Gatson. Rebound. Going to be a jump ball situation, and it will be Lady Falcon ball. So now going to work as an A. Spark plug gets a chance to take a breather. Alyssa Isaac comes in the game now. 23-9, 5-12 to go before the end of the first half. Maurice Prince and Director of Operations Shannon Hayes, Coach Hayes, on the call. Right wing to the corner. Alyssa Isaac fires it up from just inside the three-pointer. Three-point line, her shot's no good. Rebound pulled down by Brandy Harad. Alyssa in the corner now gives it up to Rihanna. Left wing, three-point shot from Imani. Trying to go around the road with the three. She can't get that one to fall that time. Yeah, but that's good to get a couple of possessions on that one. <clears throat> Let them get warmed up. All right, Rihanna Hill. Falcons remain in a 3-2 zone. Ball in the hands of Cotton. They work it around. Shot by number 11, Wagner. That shot's no good. But they're going to call a foul on... Reagan. Okay, on Reagan Carey. So Reagan Carey gets the foul here. Now going back to work. Ball up front to Amani Atchison. And Alyssa Isaac... Can't get her hands on it, and the ball's going to careen out of bounds, and it will be Lady Eagle ball. One of the things that you had talked about to me before the season started, some of the things that the rule change. Mm -hmm. So, for example, the foul count resets at the end of every quarter now. What was the science behind that, in your opinion, on that decision being made to do that? Well, I think in my opinion was that basically they wanted to allow – uh, teams to not be able to foul and, 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 and get in a one-on-one -on -one situation and then turn around to where you can try to win a basketball game. Now you, you, you automatically, when you go to, the, to that foul hack-a-shack or whatever, you're going to be guaranteed at least two, two shots on each, each time you get past five, on five and, and higher. 
All right, going to work. The Lady Eagles are going back to work. And we have Wagner, Escoffi, Cotton. Gatson is shooting the three-point shot. Her three-point shot's no good. Ends up in the hands right now of Wagner. And the ball goes out of bounds. Will be Lady Eagle ball, but also into the game is Winter Mangrum getting an opportunity to play for the Lady Eagles right now. All right, going to work. Ball on the left wing up top. So they're extending that 3-2 too far. So going back, ball in the hands now of Cotton. Gatson breaks down the defense, goes with the runner in the lane and drops it in nicely. And that's what happens when you extend that 3-2. That, that's it. You, you give up the strength of the 3-2 by do. letting them get inside. So now Rihanna Hill fires it from the left corner shot, no good. And the Falcons try to knock it off an Eagle player, not able to do that. And I guess she stepped out of bounds because I thought she did, but maybe she stepped on the green. So 23-11 is the score. 314 to go before the end of the first half. The Falcons on the floor, Alyssa Isaac and Nay Atchison, Rihanna Hill, Imani Atchison, and Reagan Carey. All right, ball inside. And Escoffi turns and scores. Great post position, and she spun on Imani on the inside. Did Imani get her hands up, in your opinion, on that play? No, Imani, Imani has the flash water, flash water the, the most. And I, until I stopped swatting, because she fouled out of the game the other night because she just kept swatting at everything. And then, like I say, when you're playing, you need to get in front of her. So she's not really fighting to be able to, to be in position to where she doesn't defend. Make it harder for them to get the ball to her. And so uh, she, Escoffi is a lot taller than she is. And so, you know, you got to play from the front, you know. Harad dumps it out to Carey. Carey drives inside. Contact by Cotton. And what I like about Reagan Carey's game is she, her demeanor is very low key. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She, 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 she doesn't talk a lot. Her face doesn't display a lot. But boy, she attacks that rim. <laughs> she does, she does, you know, and she, she's consistent about it. Uh, she kept attacking the basket the, the other night this weekend and, and, and she got the first one blocked, but she kept going and got the second one blocked, but she got that third one, you know. She, she just learned to, to, uh, to perfect it to where she could be able to be successful. All right, the Falcons missed the shot, but Brandon Hirak gets the rebound and they fires up a three. Hirak tries to pull it down, it's gonna be controlled now, or it's gonna be a, are they gonna call a foul on that one? They're going to call a foul on Rihanna Hill, who went, got yeah. down on the ground, was scrapping the ball to get the ball. Now, see, right, right there, when, when, when Harak gets that ball in the paint, don't bring that ball back down. Keep that ball high. Look at that square and shoot it. Now, cross court over to Cotton. Cotton drives it inside to Escoffi. Back up top to Gatson. Gatson, cross court over to Wagner. Ball's going to be deflected. No, it's better yet. It's going to be stolen by Reagan Carey. And Carey drives to the nice. basket and count it. She gets the steal and the deal. Reagan Carey scores it. I mean, I love the steal and the deal. Yes. You know, I, I, normally that only happens on Black Friday where you get the steal and the deal. <laughs> but generally, I'm just going to be honest about it. There is nothing better than starting the break putting pressure on the defense, and then scoring the ball. Yeah, also Cyber Mondays now. Oh, oh, that's right. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. I left one out. I left one out. It's all right. I'll let you have that one. And she completes it. Three-point play for Reagan Carey. And on the afternoon, she has five so far. 27-13. Ball to the left wing inside. Escoffi has it knocked out of her hand by Harad, who comes up with the steal. Harad up to a A, and Spark Plug puts it in the basket. Nice job by Brandi Harad. See, like now she's all the way out to the half court, you know, Gardner. It's a 3-2. You're stretching it. You're making yourself work harder than you should. Wagner's going to be called for steps. And it looks like in the game, Raquel Hunt returns. Rihanna Hill checks out. 
Milan Dixon's in the game, and who is out? Oh, it's Alyssa Isaac is out now. So, Ane, Harad, Hunt, Carey, and Dixon are on the floor. Dixon on the left wing, going to hand it off to Raquel. Milan, up above the circle, back over to the right wing to Ane. Ane getting pressure by Cotton. Ane cross court over to Milan. Milan stutter steps inside, is going to get called for steps that time. Good ball pressure being imposed there by Mangrum from the Lady Eagles that time. Yeah, it definitely was, and got to know your personnel um, and just kind of you know, put in a situation where she wasn't able to handle it. And so they got, they got what they wanted on defense in order to get that turnover. So now going to work, Gatson under a minute to go, over to Cotton. Gatson over to Wagner, Wagner inside to Escoffi. Escoffi turns around and tries to score, and Harad and does. Good power game by Escoffi, going straight through the chest of Brandy Harad on that. Yeah, it's almost like you need to get out of that 3-2 that and go to a 2-3 because basically their strong person is, 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 is Coffee. She's their strongest person. Harad spins inside. <coughs> Fancy ball handling, spinning to the baseline, not able to knock it down. Ball's going to get knocked out of bounds. But nevertheless, it's 29-15, 31.8 ticks on the clock. Reagan Carey gets the inbound. Up high to an A. An A spins inside. Ball fakes, dumps it in, and they're going to oh, call, call offensive, offensive foul. foul. Yeah. The only problem with the A's move is she went in. 12 seconds to go. And it looks like the eight lady end. The Falcons lead by 14, 29 to 15. We'll be back in just a few minutes to give you the halftime statistics on the other side you're listening to. Millwood Falcon basketball brought to you by SSM Health at St. Anthony. Loves travel stops and country stores. And we'll thank the rest of our sponsors. Sunbeam Family Services, the Millwood and Richmond Foundation, First Security Bank, A-plus Lawn Services, Big O's Pork and Dream, Chris and Christy Harrison of Heritage Funeral Home, David Threats Hair Cafe, Cosmetology School, Wing Supreme, Narissa Berry Insurance, Love Student of the Month, Super Prep and Perry Publishing and Broadcasting Company. We will be right back. City. We're live right now during the Millwood Falcons broadcast. And with today we have Mr. Milo Wilson. Mr. Wilson, how are you doing? I am great yourself, sir. Give us that great title of yours representing Millwood in what capacity? I am the Millwood and Richmond Foundation President. Also the Millwood Oklahoma City School Board Vice President. Wonderful. Well, right now I know you represent the Richmond Foundation raising money. The goal is $25,000. Tell me, what is that $25,000 going to go to us? I'm going to make you a promise. Each dollar that I raise, that we raise, will go towards our scholarships, towards our students, as well as our teacher needs. Well, if they would like to make a donation of any kind, where, where should they go right now? Right now, Cash App. Cash App Millwood Enrich OKC. That is Millwood Enrich OKC, M-I-L-L-W-O-O-D-E-N-R-I-C-H-O-K-C. -L -L Wonderful, and and for, and we look forward to seeing everyone reach that $25,000 goal, and you have a great day. Thank you, thank you. Hey, this right here is a fat butt. Everybody been hearing about it on the radio? All right, you can come to my Midwest City location, 6003 Southeast 15, or you can go to my admin, 285 South Santa Fe. Come get you one of these taters. Injuries don't wait for business hours. Now you can be seen 24 seven for sports injuries. Whether you have a sprain or a broken bone at the SSM Health Bone and Joint Injury Clinic at 13401 Northwestern. 
Oklahoma City. I'm Miles Perry, and I want you to listen to my show, Super Prep Live. Super Prep Live takes an in-depth look at the Oklahoma high school student athlete and what makes he or she become great at what they do. Super Prep Live can be heard on OKC's CBS Sports Radio 105.3 and Instagram Live. Make sure you tune in and learn about the next great student athlete on Super Prep Live with me, Miles Perry. Welcome back to the Millwood and Richmond Foundation Halftime Report. The Millwood and Richmond Foundation is trying to raise $25,000 to help take care of the teachers and scholarships for its Millwood students. Help make a positive difference in investing in our jewel institution, Millwood Public Schools. You can make a contribution at Cash App at dollar sign Millwood Enrich OKC. That is dollar sign Millwood Enrich OKC. And at this time of year, I'm going to be honest with you, Coach Hayes, $5, $10, $50, $500, all those are all nice donations. But one thing I always stress to everyone is these donations do not go directly to the athletic department. A lot of folks <laughs> always think, oh, I'm going to come there next week. I'm going to see a whole new, you know, they're going to have a whole new inflatable in the end zone, something new. But this is about academics. This is Absolutely. about helping kids meet the needs. There are a lot of kids that don't have some of the essentials that they need to, to achieve the education that they want. Mm -hmm. This helps them get that and helps the teachers who are always trying to be innovative innovators in the classroom at Millwood. Yeah, I mean, like I say, the Richmond Foundation has been around for a while, and it's always uh, been a positive thing to kind of uh, encourage our teachers, uh, support all of what they do. They do a lot of things. A lot of times they come out of their pockets. And so uh, I'm just so thankful that they are, are working to try to help uh, encourage our, our teachers and, and, and develop our students. 
All right, looking at the team stats in the first half of this game, Millwood shot 8 of 15, 53% in field goals, 3 of 7 from, from deep, 43%. How about that? That's not bad. 3 okay. of 10 at rebounds, 3 offensive rebounds, 7 uh, defensive rebounds. But the six turnovers, ugly. Then, of course, you also have six assists and four of seven from the free throw line. On the other side, the Lady Eagles were five of 12 in field goals, 42%, 0 of three from deep, 10 rebounds, so there's no plus minus for either team there. But nine turnovers, three assists, but five of 11, that hot start at the free throw line sort of cooled off, and that's what allowed the Falcons to extend their lead. The high-flying Falcons of the first half, and Nate Atchison in double digits, 13 points. Harad is the next high flyer with six, and then you've got two Falcons, uh, Imani Atchison with five. That was off the bench, in fact. Mm -hmm. And then you have Reagan Carey in the box with five. But Reagan Carey's stat line is always impressive. She's got two defensive boards so far and one steal. Now, Harad always filling up the stat sheet. Six points, two assists, Six rebounds, unfortunately two fouls, but three steals to go with that. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm glad that we, we're not always depending on, on Brandy. And so that I'm, I'm, I'm glad that uh, uh, Ane is, is, is stepping up. She's a senior. This is, this is her last hurrah. I mean, so uh, every game is her last game, you know. So, uh, you know, play like it counts. And, um, and so uh, I like that effort and that intensity. And I hope she can continue that. We need to minimize our, our, uh, our turnovers this quarter, uh, this, this half, as well as uh, we need to adjust our defense because right now the outside game, they're not, they're not affecting us. So we, we, need, to, we need to stop number ones. Scoffy, she, she, Scoffy, she, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How many points has Scoffy had? That, that, that one, I know she got to be in double digits. Well, you know? you're talking about 15. She's got eight or 10 of their 15, okay. of their, of their 15 points. But she's done it from the free throw line. And what I like about it is she's in control and plays with pace. You can't rush her game, but she has been able and taking it right to the chest of her rod, and it's been very impressive. All right, going back to work. Ball in the hands of Anae Atchison in the second half is underway as we are here as the Falcons taking on Harding Charter Prep. Raquel Hunt has to chase, chase down the missed shot, but Reagan Carey draws inside. She can't score, but guess who does? Brandy Harrod. Gets the rebound and the putback. It's a nice job there. Three-point shot is no good. Rebound by Harad. On the other end, Anae tries to finish. She goes a little too fast. Can't get that one to fall. And here come the Eagles, who are down 16 points as it stands right now. 7-18 to go. And the third, Maurice Prince and Director of Operations, Shannon Hayes, on the call. I will refer to him as coach because that's what he is at art. To the corner. Back to, to the left wing. Now back up top. Reset by Gatson. Scoffy is now 21. Um, I've noticed they've changed her jersey. Maybe there was something on her jersey, but she's now number 21. All right. Good call on that. Thank you for that. Because I sure will be looking on the roster for somebody else. All right, working the ball around the perimeter. Wagner has to chase it down. Rihanna Hill as the Falcons are now in a... Looks like they're still going to be a timeout called by the Lady Eagles and Coach Lewis calls a timeout because of the stagnant move motion on the offense side of the ball. Sit. Yeah, that, that, you know, like I say, sorry, Mo, I didn't mean to interrupt no, you there. That's all right. <laughs> you know, and, and like I say, I see we've adjusted our defense to try to be able to cater more to it. Um, I just figure we got to work on our rebounds, be stronger. Um, you know, and it's funny looking at Coach Lewis because Coach Lewis was with me for at least two or three years, and I don't think he said three words. You know, and so uh, I, I walked into one of his practices. He used to coach the freshmen. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I didn't know he talked, talked you know. So uh, I mean, profound, you know, what he says, but I was like, oh, I didn't even know. So uh, it's, it's, it's different seeing him in this, in this uh, environment, in this, in this position. So 31-15. All right, going to work. Ball back in the hands of Wagner. Wagner's going to almost have it knocked away by Brandy Harrod. It will be Lady Eagle ball. Baseline, they're going to inbound it. And they're trying to get it in. Bounce pass. Looks like it's going to be stolen. Falcons go down to get it. 
going to be a jump ball situation. It will be the call, and Lady Eagles will have the ball. 6.36 to go. Falcons have not scored in the, in the third quarter as of yet, but that may change here very soon. Ball in the hands now of Zaskoffi, and it's going to be a jump ball situation. Harad caused a tie-up, and I, it's a good job by Harad at the result, but I don't like the decision given a 16-point lead that you got two fouls. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, just, you want to be a little aggressive, uh, you know, and, and just be careful as you work through it. Harad. And ladies and gentlemen, if you wonder why it's loud, it's not because of the band. It seems like the cheerleaders seem to be having a battle here on both ends of the court. <laughs> <laughs> They're having a good time. They are having a good time. So it looks like a foul is going to be called. All right, the, there's only one foul, and it's the Eagles foul. And it's going to end up being a three-point shot by Rihanna Hill, who finds the mark. 34-15. Ball in the hands of Escoffi. Escoffi's going to lose it. And a nice pass from the ground and gets it in the hands of Williams and scores the ball. Escoffi is really putting doing a great job. Yeah, and she, she's getting the attention of our girls. And so when you've got two or three girls on her at one time, you know somebody's got to be open, and she's good to be able to find that open person. Reagan Carey scores the ball, and going to work right now, here come the Lady Eagles. Working the ball around, bounce pass inside, deflected out, but recovered by the Eagles. Raquel goes for the steal. Ball up top, Cotton drives inside. And she's going to get fouled driving to the basket. Foul's going to be called this time up by Raquel Hunt. You know, got to work on closeout. Got to work on closeout. When they do that skip pass, the purpose of that skip pass is to be able to attack that backside gap of that zone. And hopefully by the time you turn around, they're already inside that zone. And now what our ladies doesn't do is they don't, they don't move their feet. They start swatting at the ball or, or, or they're, they're so fit that they're jumping in and trying to not close out like they should. So it's it's they're they're exploiting some of our weaknesses that we got to work on in those areas. All right, looks like Neve Mazette has checked into the game now for Reagan Carey. Second free throw attempt is missed. Brandy Harada pulled down the rebound. Raquel has it. Scuff, scuffle for the ball as it rolls around on the ground. Rihanna Hill picks it up, drives to the basket, and scores. And I need to see more from her on that. You know, just not your three-point shot. I need you to attack the basket. I mean, she's got she's probably one of the fastest girls in this team. Um, and so she's got to be more aggressive on, on, on attacking that basket. Wagner steps inside the three-point line. Let's go a shot from the short corner and drains it. So nice job by her. 20 to 38 is the score. So 442 to go before the end of the third. 38-20. Across the timeline goes Gatson and they covering her. 2-3, two, 3-2 three, three, two zone still going to work. Cotton goes inside, throws it up high. She can't get it to fall. Rebound. And on the other end, and A scores it. You know, something else I like about the Harding Eagles is that each one knows what their specialty is. If you notice what 33 is on the, on the court, she's going to attack with that left hand every time. Um, you notice what, you know, like I say, Scoffy, what, her, what hers is. Uh, we now got the young lady in the short corner over here, you know, her shot, uh, number four, Williams. They all play within what they know, and, and, and they continue to do that. I've noticed that. All right. Cotton fires up a three-point shot. She can't get it to fall. Rebound by Raquel Hunt. And ball in the hands of Rihanna Hill. She drives the basket. She can't get it to fall. But nice decision yes, by, yes. Uh, by Hill to drive. That's what you had just called for more. Foul's going to be called against Escoffi. And something I used to, used to tell, our, tell our girls, you know, when your outside shot is not working, drive to the basket. Get some confidence. Get oh, your you, couple you mean shots. just like that? Yeah, just like that. Yeah. Just like that. And Nate Atchison drives inside. Believe it or not, she's got 17 on the night, folks. The only Falcon in double digits right now. 
Cross-court pass, and it's going to go through the legs of Cotton. And it was a low rolling pass. Coach Lewis did not like that by Wagner that time. Yeah, number 11, she's the role player. She just basically all she does is make sure she doesn't turn the ball over. She passes. She looks for 10. She looks for 33. I mean, that's kind of her role. And so Raquel Hunt fires up a three. She can't get it to fall. Ball ends up in the hands of Rihanna Hill, and she gets fouled by Cotton on the putback attempt. So, team foul number three now for the Lady Eagles. Hill misses her first free throw attempt. She'll get one more. Three oh five, forty-two to 20. 22 point late, check that, make that 23 point lead. So the Lady Falcons with 3.02 to go in the third, extending the lead. Working the ball around the edge, Cotton brings the ball down, hands it off to Gatson. Gatson trying to find some space. And Alyssa Isaac, who's in the game now, not giving her any. Leads to a three-point attempt by uh, Williams. She can't get it to fall that time. Ball back in the hands of the Lady Eagles. 2.31 to go. Cotton drives inside on Hill, kicks it to the corner. Shot by Williams is no good. Rebound that time by Wagner. Wagner can't get it, and then Escoffi throws it up, and she can't get it to fall. Too many rebounds and too many opportunities on that one for the Eagles. Yeah, and, and, and like I say, I mean, you know, we're still extending this zone. Uh, my thing is that we need to, we don't need to extend a zone. Last I checked, we were up by 23 points. So that means that they, they got to come to us. We don't, we don't need to go to them. And so uh, I think that's kind of exposing us a little bit. We're moving a lot more. And, and so uh, just kind of compact that back in. But we're doing a lot better this quarter. I'm seeing a lot more. Sometimes you can play down to your level of competition. And so I'm not saying degrading, you know, the Eagles, but um, you know, our talent is, is a little more there to where we should be playing at a higher caliber based off of what I saw last week, you know? 43-21. And I'm glad you mentioned that because you want to, first of all, we're not going to de degrade the Eagles at all. Mm -hmm. What we're going to say is they're more comfortable in the Falcons are in an off and athletic and what you saw, the triple threat positions, yes. more so than the Eagles are. And this time, Raquel is going to get called for steps. That time, Raquel's going to get called for steps. Turnover. She didn't get the call for the foul. They bumped her. And then there should have been a jump ball instead of a, a turnover. But, you know, so don't so make that half of a turnover, okay? Because that really wasn't a okay, turnover. Okay, let a me jump see ball. if my score sheet has half. <laughs> Take away. Point five, got it. All right, we got it. We got it marked down. Escoffi from the elbow leads into a three-point shot attempt. A nice shot by Kiara Wagner, getting that shot to fall. 43-24. Back to a 19-point lead. And and I'll take that. You know, because I mean, she's made one out of 20. So you know, you know, it's, it, that that's okay. You know, you don't have to always have a hand in the face because, like I say, she hadn't really been a threat. So. You come down, she do two in a row. Then we got to we got to do some adjustments, you know. So, uh, all right, ball in the hands of Cotton on the left wing, back up top to, to Kiara Wagner, left wing. Cotton tries to dump it inside to Escoffi. Going to be knocked out of bounds by Ann White, who's checked into the game. Falcons make a substitution as Hunt comes out and Milan Disc Dixon comes in. So you officially have. Two or second and third stringers in the game now. Mm -hmm. Ball's going to be knocked out of bounds after Escoffi tried to get the shot up. And I like White. You know, uh, she uh, she's she's a hard worker. She yeah. wants to learn the game and, and do is be the best she can be at it. You know, and, and help to uh, help her teammates win. You know, great team player. Dixon gets it over to Alyssa Isaac. Isaac. That's kickball. It's going to be a kickball situation. Should be Falcon ball still. And it is. Dixon to trigger it with 42 on the clock. 
Alyssa Isaac standing on the logo. Cross court over to Dixon on the right wing. Dixon inside. And the ball's going to be stripped by Escoffi. Knocked loose on the, on the Neve Mazette possession. Cotton fires up a three. Back rim's no good. On the other side, inside, the Falcons are fighting underneath. But will remain Lady Eagle ball with 13.2 seconds to go. And it's good to see, you know, her clearing her bench and giving these, these young ladies an opportunity to play. That will help them along the, wrong, along the way of their season. And Scoffy shoots it. She can't knock it down. It will be a miss. So 43-24. 9.7 seconds to go. Ball inbounds. Nice block there <laughs> by Mazette M Neve. Yes, yes. She put her hand straight up. The official sure could not question that. As Wagner shoots a three, his time expires and does get it to fall. That's textbook defense. You know, she just stood her hands up. Old girl came to her and was like, hey. <laughs> Right. I'm solid. I'm here. Yeah, I'm not going nowhere, you know. No, but that's what you teach. Yep. I mean, she went fingers straight up. Not not that hands hanging over you, you know, like this. I mean, straight up. I mean, there was no question, can you say, what, she, what the position of Neve Mazette was on that block. And nice and good for her. As we are still here between the quarters here, time for our First Security Bank quarter recap. First Security Bank is making your dreams of becoming a business owner or maybe a homeowner come true. Check them out today. Go to First Security Bank, FSB, or you can call them 424-4341 and get in line to get the information that you need. Now, when you look at the quarter itself, what stood out to me is that the Falcons outscored Harding 14 to 12, but 12 points allowed, and I grant you, you didn't have all your starters in the game, so that has a lot to do with it. But what I like is the Falcons getting a chance to, as you said earlier, get into a flow with some meaningful minutes, mm -hmm. not garbage time, mm -hmm. but meaningful minutes early in the game. Yeah, yeah, and this would be good experience for these young ladies. And like I say, you get some footage and some film and be able to let these young ladies see what they're doing on the floor. Uh, it's a great opportunity for them. Great. Going back to work, fouls have been reset. Dixon cross court over to Alyssa Isaac. Going to be tracked down by Gatson. Then Isaac gets it right back. Nice job by her. Ball back over to Gatson. Inside going to be deflected out of bounds. Nice job again by Mazette. And Mazette, and see how she's playing it? She's playing it from the front, you know. And so because she's trusting her backside help, to be able to help her when you're dealing with a zone. So that backside helps, got to fall down and get the backside, so. All right, ball to the corner. They're going to fire cross court. Back up top to Gatson for three. Gatson can't get it to fall. Rebound by Mazette. And then this time, they managed to get Mazette with the foul on the putback off the rebound. Just got to learn to get the elbows out, you know. Get those elbows out. Takes tight snug. And, and, and find your outlet. Things so, that she'll learn. An and one opportunity as a Scoffy. And doesn't matter if it was Hurrah, doesn't matter if anybody. A Scoffy leaves it short, but gets her own rebound. Gets a third rebound. And the then back. she goes to the free throw line again. They're going to call a foul, but you're right. That's Escoffy, over the back. Scoffy was over the back. So 43-30 now. Scoffy knocks the next one down. All right, going back to work. Ball in the hands of Imani Atchison. Gatson gets it up into the basket. Drawing contact goes Wagner. 
Drawing contact against Alyssa Isaac. <laughs> Alyssa was like, I, I guess I'm trying to take a charge. I didn't know what she, she didn't know what she was doing. <laughs> so on that particular situation, 43-31. And she knocks down the first free throw. And 6.56 to go. This could be a 10 point game and here comes the <laughs> massive substitutions. And she gets it. And so now you're talking about the complete starting crew returning to the game. Coach Albert says, time to make the decision is a 10 point margin. And kudos to the Lady Eagles for not quitting. Ball in the hands of Harad. Gets it down to Rihanna Hill. And she scores off the Euro step. Nice job, nice assist by Harad. Hill officially with eight points. Tying with Harad has. Escoffi onto the box. She can't score. Brandy Harad pulls it down. Back over, give and go. <laughs> Carry to spark plug, and she scores the basket. Nice, nice, nice. Get back, get back, get back. Escoffi drives inside and gets an easy basket on the other end. Turnover being called by Coach Lewis. Falcons lead by 12, but it feels a lot closer. Yeah, 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 it does, it does. You know, uh, Coach, Coach Albert is, is kind of playing some little some strategy here to kind of see how our girls can, can do so, you know, let the bench kind of play a little bit, close that 20-something gap, kind of make it more of a competitive athlete and see how our girls, our starters do in times like this. So, uh, you know, like I say, uh, Scoffy, man, I mean, sh sh if she was on our team, she'd be playing a, playing a game. I mean, she's she's got that turnaround, Glass, Tim Duncan, you know, shot, I mean, and, and really impressive. I, I'm really, really admired by her, her game. Yeah, it's kind of hard not to be impressed by what she does. The, the team overall has been impressive. And when I look and think about, you know, I always like to compare teams to what they had the year before and mm -hmm. things like that. Uh, Escoffi reminds me, when I start thinking about, of Layla Jones's game from mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. I think that's mm -hmm. not quite a fair assessment. And I'm just saying that Layla had the game to go, you know, on the box, and we started to see her mature last year as a senior into the into the, you know, into in the Falcon system that she was in. Reagan Carey misses the shot, and it's going to end up being a jump ball situation, and it will be Lady Eagle basketball. Six minutes to go. 47-35. It's good to see this uh, full court press and see how we how we how we work this. All right, working the ball around. All back in the hands of Gatson to the corner, and they're going to lose it out of bounds. They're going to say get knocked out of bounds, but nonetheless, it still will be Lady Eagle ball who are trying to make it a ten point game with 5:47 to go. Not saying this game got on cruise control at all, but this game became a little different. And the ball's going to be thrown off. Nice job on by Brandy Harad, who took the inbound <laughs> pass and somehow threw it off Cotton Shoe. Yeah, I think she was off balance and knew she was about to fall out, so she said, hey, I'm just going to make it off you. So good defensive play there. So the ball is now in the hands of Vinay, and then Vinay is going to be called for steps there. She doesn't necessarily agree with the call. I, I, I don't either. I mean, there's some physicality there that apparently he it just, I don't know what he didn't see, but I saw. But, I mean, I guess he, he, he got a closer view. But Coach Albert is trying to discuss some things with the officiating crew. And the ball is on the ground. Harat went down to get it. Going to be a jump ball situation. Lady Falcon basketball. So Harad to inbound it, and she does. And A, across the timeline, draws the attention, attention of Cotton. And A behind the back. Uh, 
tries to hit her with the sauce, but instead ends up on the ground. Gatson ends up with it, and now it's going to be another jump ball situation. And right now, Cotton got bumped her head a little bit on the ground. So she's going to have to get looked at, so we're going to have to see the trainer. Just a second here. Coach Lewis coming to take a look at his player. While we have this opportunity, we want to make sure we thank our sponsors for tonight's contest. It's Sunbeam Family Services, the Millwood and Richmond Foundation, First Security Bank, A-plus Lawn Services, Big O's Pork and Dreams, Chris and Christy Harrison of Heritage Funeral Home, David Threat's Hair Cafe, Tosmetology School, Wing Supreme, Narissa Berry Insurance Agency, Love Student of the Month, Super Prep, and Perry Publishing and Broadcasting Company. And that is Sarah Cotton. She gets off under her own power, but she did a great job, and she's played a terrific game when it comes to effort tonight. Yeah, she has. She definitely has. Like I say, she has that one signature move she's going to do. I don't know if she's a lefty or not, but she definitely plays that left side of the court, and she attacks that basket. 5-18. And it will be Lady Eagle ball. We're going to throw it in now is Williams. Williams to inbound right in front of the Falcon bench. Ball in the hand now of Gatson. He's got to get it as the Falcons extend pressure. They're going to call Raquel Hunt for the push. It's amazing. The foul counts 4 0. Hmm. In the second half? <laughs> in, in, I mean, in the fourth so far, you're yeah, right. So, I mean, you know, we. we Gatson over to Williams. Cross court over. Going to be stolen by Reagan Carey. Carey up to Ane. Ane tries to finish with the left hand. He's going to get hacked. So Ane back to the free throw line. And she's going to go for the 20 piece. Wow, okay. She spins, shoots, and can't get the first one to fall. Good thing about it, she gets one more. Yeah, you, you, you jinxed her. So you sh should have said nothing until afterwards, you know. Okay, you know. listen, listen. I'm, <laughs> I'm afforded that mistake every now and then, okay? All right. Now, when she makes it, am I, am I going to get the same love? Yeah, yeah, you get the same love. Look, you can get a lot of love after, fr after Friday night. I'm going to give you whatever you want. <laughs> Second free throw is down, and Anae has a 20-piece on the night, and that is 20 points on the night. Gatson's pass is going to be intercepted that time. And to the basket goes Anae, and she wants to go double deuce. deuce. Double deuce. <laughs> nice assist on that one by Raquel Hunt. Falcons back up by 15. And shot. Three-point shot is two. true. Oh, it's a two-point shot. 50-37, mm -hmm. 4-21 to go. Brandy Harad can't finish. Let's see. Foul's going to be called against Escoffi. So to the free throw line. I do believe Brandi Harrod's going to go. Yeah. And Brandi Harrod, I would like her to, to see her knock down these two because she will become the second Falcon in double-digit scoring. Believe it or not, Brandi Harrod only has eight points on the night. And you would now, think last year when you don't have eight, she only has eight points that we don't Falcon, have a good game. The Falcons yeah. don't have a mm -hmm. chance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What a difference. And she knocks down free throw number one. For point number nine. Harad steps to the line, spins it. Shot. Front rim's no good on that one. Rebound, Lady Eagles. 51-37. Just about four minutes to play. Ball now in the hands. Of Wagner. 
Wagner getting double teamed. Looks like it's going to be a timeout called. So it looks like it's going to be a full timeout called here. And we'll stay here as well. We are officially at a A-plus lawn services timeout. If you want your lawn to get that blue look, why do you want that blue? That means your lawn is healthy for next year. But it's got to go through that blue stage that clean, clears out all the weeds. It helps your lawn get nurtured as it should. So if your business lawn or home lawn looks kind of brown, nasty, and dry, get some of that green. That's from A-plus Lawn Service and Professionals. Owner Milo Wilson and his staff will take great care of you. Call for an appointment today, 405-535-5139. That's 405-535-5139. Also want to thank Sunbeam Family Services tonight. Build a brighter future with all children and families. You can find a mental health support, become a foster parent, and enroll a child in early education and care. And so much more, they can do it for you. Located at the former Edwards Elementary School. For more information, take a check and look it up. SunbeamFamilyServices.org. 3.57 to go before the end of this contest. Reminder, there will be a brief break, and then the boys' game will start. Going to be an entertaining game as the crowd started to mosey in here, getting ready for tonight's second game. Yeah, we kind of we kind of boxed in here. Uh, <laughs> do you feel do you feel, feel kind of closed in as Escoffi misses the first shot and gets her own rebound? <coughs> Escoffi has just been a beast tonight. Yes. And back to the free throw line she goes. First shot is true. 51-38. 3.47 to go. Of course, the Eagles are in the bonus now. And the second shot is true. 51-39. Hill from the right wing or the right corner shot no good. That that that's where you attack the basket. That 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 was she had a driving lane. She attacked the basket on. Her. Bounce pass to the top to Gatson. Gatson over to Mangrum. And then Gatson is going to lose it out of bounds for the turnover. 3.23 to go. Hunt over. To a nay. Hunt. Right wing. Right corner. Back up top to Harad. Harad drives inside and catches to a bounce pass to a beautiful cutting to the lane. Reagan Carey. What do you oh, think of that? Man, I love it. I love it. I want to see more of that. That that that's that's textbook offense. Ball's deflected by Raquel. Driving to the lane goes Gatson. She can't get the runner to fall. Rebound by Hunt. Hunt's going to lose it. Back the other way. Bounce pass over. Gatson from the left wing. Three-point shot is no good. Rebound by Carey. And they to the basket. Nice, easy layup, and she scores it. 55-39, 2.20 to go. Wagner drives inside off her rod shot. No, no good. So Imani Atchison comes in for Raquel Hunt. It's good to see Cotton back in the game for the Eagles after she took that fall earlier. All right, to work. Right wing, corner to Hill. Hill has the ball knocked out of her hand by Escoffi. 55-39, 2 2 to go in this contest. Immediately following the game, Coach Hayes will pick the player of the game as Rihanna Hill drives to the baseline and, gets, and draws contact. You said she could do that all night long. All night long, all night long, all night long. <clears throat> Can you say it one more time? I will call you Lionel. 
I would, I would at, tell you a joke, but I'm going to leave it alone. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Barnes comes in the game for Gatson. Also into the game is Gigi Gioffi. And they in the corner. Cross court over to her sister at the left wing. Back up top to Ane, inside to Harad at the elbow. Harad drives inside and slips and falls. They're gonna call her for steps. Not that she didn't, you know, wasn't pushed or anything. But, but you gotta see your vision. You put your head down and you don't realize where you are and what's around you. Turn around, square up, and, 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 and see. And if there's too many people around you, somebody's gotta be open. 137 to go. Ball to the left wing. Back in the middle to Wagner. Cross court over to Cotton. Cotton ball fakes. Ball nearly stolen by Reagan Carey. She turns around, drives to the length. She can't score on that one. Rebound pulled down by Harad. Throwback. And they to the basket with the right hand and scores. I'm going to say that was planned, okay? All right. Is, is, is that what that is? That, that was planned. That was planned all along. Okay. <laughs> that sounded really good the way you said it. You said it with such conviction. Cotton has it inside to Escoffi. Escoffi with a double team can't get it to fall. And the ball is just rolling around on the ground. Jump ball situation. It will be Falcon basketball. So is it a timeout on the floor or is it an issue? I think timeout it's a by timeout. David. <clears throat> Coach Albert calls a timeout. It's a full timeout. We'll stay right here. You know, when we start looking at this game, you said you wanted the Falcons to finish. And your opinion, are they playing better in the second half of the game than they did in the first? Oh, a whole lot better. A whole lot better. Um, they finally um, dialed in, started a... Uh, Focusing, still some things we got to work on from the defensive standpoint, on rebounds, uh, kind of control our fouls. I mean, we were in five fouls before we even <laughs> got a minute into the fourth quarter. But uh, I, I like the little strategy of getting the game closer and bring them back in and see how they respond. And so just to test the girls. So, yeah, I mean, better second half all along. Um, I sound proud of the girls. Uh, uh, May, she did an amazing job. I don't think she's had a 24-point game. This may be her highest score uh, in my, of her in, career. In, in the last few in the last few years of me covering this, I have never seen, to my knowledge, a 26-point game from Anae Atchison. Now here's the point: she's always been capable of doing it. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! She was dynamic as a freshman. That sophomore year was a tough one for her. Junior year, we saw her game grow, her confidence grow. Mm -hmm. As Alyssa Isaac, as we have wholesale substitutions in the game right now. So on the other end, scoring the ball goes Neve. Mazette. So they're going to cut Raquel Hunt with the, with the uh, foul there. So 59-39. The ball is dropped in by Wagner. 19 point game again. But, but I like that, you, you know, I told you two people I wanted to kind of spotlight tonight. You know, uh, Reagan and uh, Raquel, two freshmen who's pretty much been thrown into the, to the thrust of the limelight to kind of have to put up. We don't, we don't have no time to develop. You, you, you got to be ready to roll. And um, I, I just see their confidence is so much better. They continue to grow. All right, inside. And then Alyssa Isaac trying to get her hands on the ball with 11 seconds to go. Ball in the hands as Wagner shoots the three. She can't get it to fall. Ball is bouncing around like an old pinball machine. And finally, Escoffi gets it, and she scores. As time expires, 
The Falcons are going to win by 17, 42 to 59. So when we look at that, your biggest takeaways from the game. Biggest take takeaway is that um, I'm glad we had somebody else besides the Rock be the high score of the game. Uh, that was great. Uh, I, I like I like their defense is a lot better, uh, 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 more aggressive. Still need a little more work on it in terms of just keeping the fouls under control. But I like their intensity. I mean, it, it is uh, their, their confidence seems to be growing, and uh, you know, you got to clear the bench. Got an opportunity for everybody to get some playing time, like say not no leftover minutes. So I think you know that was uh, to me a, a, a good a good opportunity for our, our young ladies. Okay, for the game tonight for field goals, Harding Charter Prep shot 32 percent overall. Uh, they got two three pointers to fall in the course of the contest. They were two of 10, 20 percent, 11 of 31 from the floor, from inside the arc. That's 35 percent. They finished the game with 23 rebounds and five steals overall in the contest. So now, going to work now, the Falcons themselves shot for the game 24-41, 59%, almost 60% for the game. Wow. 20 of 30 from the field, 67. Four of 11 from three-pointers, 36%. You can say that's shot selection here and there if you yeah. want to be real picky. But the Falcons had uh, 19 rebounds tonight, one block, 10 steals, and they slowed the turnovers. They had six turnovers in the first half. They only had four in the second half yeah, of the game. Yeah. So that was a big thing. But I like also the 12 assists overall in the contest tonight. So your high flying Falcons for the game, Anae Atchison with 26 points, one assist in the game. Rihanna Hill, eight points, two assists, two rebounds, uh, she has two steals and two fouls. Brandi Harrod did not get into double digits, but she might as well in everything else. Nine points, ten rebounds, three steals, and believe it, you know, we talked about her foul trouble. She stayed at two. That's good. That's, That's good. That's good. So Raquel Hunt did not score, but she had one assist, three rebounds, and two steals in her time. Imani Atchison had five points and one foul. Reagan, Reagan Carey, nine points. Three assists, three rebounds, and two steals. Alyssa Isaac did not score but one assist, one steal, one foul. And Neve Mazette, two points, one rebound, one block, and she had a turnover on the course of the night. But that is the Falcons scoring line, so if you had to give a player of the game, who is it going to? <laughs> who is it going to? I don't know, man. This is kind of tough. I don't know. You know? Uh, I, I, I mean, it's got to be Anae Atchison. Anae mean, Atchison with 26 points tonight. I don't know if it's a career high, but it's going to be a broadcast high for me. Yes. Glad to see her do that. We're going to take a quick break, come back in a few minutes, and start getting you ready for the boys game. Yes. That's about eight minutes away from tip-off. You're listening to Millwood Falcon Basketball, brought to you by Love's Travel Stops at Country Stores and SSM Health at St. Anthony. Injuries don't wait for business hours. Now you can be seen 24-7 for sports injuries. Whether you have a sprain or a broken bone at the SSM Health Bone and Joint Injury Clinic at 13401 Northwestern. This is our Love's Travel Stop Student of the Month, Kiana Tubbs from Crystal Ray OKC Catholic High School. Thanks for joining us, Kiana. Thank you guys for having me. So I heard that you currently have a 4.2857 GPA. 
Yes. <laughs> that is really impressive. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what motivates you in school? So what motivates me in school is just kind of wanting to go to the higher level, so wanting to go to college, but also having a support system in my family and friends and just wanting to make them proud. So student government, I'm involved as the student body president, so I had to run and be elected for student body president. I also heard that you have plans to attend Howard University and pursue a career as a criminal defense attorney. Um, what led to that career choice and was that always something you wanted to do? So I've always been into like politics and law, but I didn't exactly know what I wanted to do in that area. And so I combined my passion of helping people. And so that's kind of how I came up with criminal defense attorney. It's helping people when they're in a position where they can't help themselves.
Welcome, welcome, welcome to tonight's boys action as the Millwood Falcons will take on the Harding Charter Prep Eagles. Maurice Prince will be joined back here in just a moment with, of course, Director of Operations Shannon Hayes. Thank you for tuning in and joining us tonight. Happy to have you with us. Want to make sure we thank all our sponsors for tonight's contest. Of course, that's Sunbeam Family Services, the Millwood and Richmond Foundation, First Security Bank, A-plus Lawn Services, Big O's Pork and Dreams, Chris and Christy Harrison of Heritage Funeral Home, David Threats Hair Cafe, Cosmetology School, Wing Supreme, Narissa Berry Insurance Agency, Love Student of the Month, Super Prep, and Perry Publishing and Broadcasting Company. Maurice Prince and, Sh and Shannon Hayes, Coach Hayes will be here in just a second, but one of the things that was most impressive about game one that we had a chance to see last week was against Destiny Christian was the play of newcomer and I got to give this young man some 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 obvious kudos was Isaiah Wilkes the sophomore he came ready to play and made a difference in the game and I had to say when I started looking at the super prep players to watch I want to see some more Isaiah Wilkes coach <laughs> oh, yeah. I want to see some more <laughs> yeah. you know, and, yeah. it's, and it's kind of crazy when you look at this team that this team is still not at full strength you still got four players Robert Wilson, Chance Davis uh, you're still talking about Jaden Nickens obviously and you, 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 Zaire, Zaire Fisher, Zaire Fisher mm -hmm. who have not even added themselves to the team so you're going to have a team that's almost not only 10 strong but maybe 12 to 13 strong and finding minutes for these guys is going to be interesting and I, I'm interested to see what coach uh, what coach Dorian Williams wants to do with that when he gets a chance to see those guys mess with this team but well, the, in the first game though you know what's what's your players to watch brought to you by super prep super prep one of the leading when you talk about talent watching high school signing all that from national Local Super Prep has it all. And that's something that I really want to point out to everybody. They can be found on CBS Sports Radio. You can find that on CBS social media websites, Instagram, Twitter. Look for them. They got all the information you need. I got three players. I'm sorry. I mean, I, I, I'm, try, I'm trying to, you know, because I'm going to tell you, you know, Zion Williams. Okay. You know, is one I'm definitely uh, considering. Amari Barrett, number three. He's another one. Now, yeah, Isaiah Wilkes, definitely, but and Chris Clay. Those, those, those are my three <laughs> okay. that I'm really, you know, just kind of itching to see how they continue to evolve. All right, so we're going to hear the starting lineups. In, in just a few minutes also, Coach Hayes, I want to get your keys to the game, sponsored by Narissa Berry Insurance. She would like to help you get the best insurance coverage for your home, automobile, or maybe even a life insurance policy. Let her help you protect what's important to you. 405-547-0595 is the number. So we've got Zon Williams, Amari Barrett. Of course, I want to talk about Solomon Davis. He had a tremendous game last week. Adrian Anderson Nelson, he was exciting for me to watch just last week by himself. So and now, Chris, And Chris Clay. Okay. Isaiah Wilkes is not starting. Okay, Chris he's not. Clay. So Chris Clay is starting tonight, yeah. okay? For the starting lineup for your for the Eagles tonight. So number three will confirm it in just a second. Anthony Tucker. So who do we have for the starters tonight? We've got uh, Marv Torrance. We've got Anthony Tucker. We got DJ Hillman. We've got Johan Marin. We've got Hunter Webb and Daniel Gregg. All right. So those are your starters tonight. And one thing I always look at is the size of the players as well. They've got a lot of good size on their front court. Mm -hmm. This is a team that likes to run up and down the floor. They will do that. Uh, Millwood, of course, the back-to-back -back Class 3A defending champions, and everybody wants to make it box office when they get a chance to play 
And so all these teams get together. It's always going to be some fireworks tonight. So Narissa Berry, keys to the game tonight. Keys to the game tonight really is pretty much <clears throat> continue to stay hungry. Uh, they've been really excited about this season. So they got to continue to stay hungry, stay focused, uh, and uh, play, play, play your role. You know, like I say, you've got – a lot of kids on this team, so but do your job. Yeah, just do your job, you know. And I and I think they'll 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 be really successful. Zon Williams into the front court now, over to Barrett. Amari Barrett over to Christopher Clay, who's in the starting lineup tonight. Barrett slips a little bit, but able to maintain control. Zon drives inside, kicks back out. Barrett ball fakes, side step, three point shot, no good by Barrett. Rebound pulled down. And here come the Eagles. Nice pace. They did not push the ball hard up the floor right now. Torrance with the ball in the right week. Trying to get the ball inside. Cross court over. Tucker. Tucker. Tucker fires up a deep three-point shot. No good. Rebound by Barrett. Barrett up to Zahn Williams, who gets fouled on the basket attempt. Gets fouled by Tucker, and he will go to the line shooting two. First team foul. So first team foul, they will get another opportunity here. Zahn's going to shoot for two. Yeah, Zahn, you know, he's a <clears throat> pretty pretty aggressive player. I'm seeing a lot of – he's got a lot of up to his game. And, and Zahn, I, I want to point this out as he knocks down free throw number one. We never got a chance to see his contributing. He was always there with the team, but due to the injury he suffered midseason last year, I mean, that was tough. Yeah, yeah, it was. And, and I mean, and, and, and the, the blessing was that, you know, he was a junior. So, you know, he got an opportunity to come back this year and if he stays healthy and, and dialed in. I think he, he's going to be huge in terms of us adding another piece to that state championship. Trap in the corner, going to swing it back out. Ball fake, three-point shot is no good. Nice rebound on the inside. Put back and score by Greg on the play. Greg scores it. And they lead two to one. Nice job. Inside goes Nelson. He can't get it to score. Nice work by Barrett on the rebound. Reset the offense. Barrett back up to Zahn. Zahn over to Barrett. Barrett drives inside. Short corner. Shot. And he knocks it down. Nice job by Barrett off the assist from Zahn Williams. 3-2. Again, full court pressure being extended by the Falcons. Working the ball around to the outside, Hillman. Hillman turns the corner, goes baseline, throws it out. Going to be deflected out by Barrett. Barrett, active hands early. Inside again. Power game on the inside by Greg. Greg scores it. Four to three, 558 to go. Swinging the ball out to Zion Williams. Zahn drives inside to the basket and scores. 5-4. Back and forth we go early in this one. 5.45 to go in the first. Yeah, Zahn had that first step, and when he gets around you, and he, you think he's going one way and he's going another. So we got a turnover here. 5.36 to go. Timeout going to be called here by Harding. The timeout going to be sponsored by A Plus Lawn Services. Would you like your home lawn or business lawn to look green, full, and healthy? Then call the professionals at A Plus Lawn Service. Owner Milo Wilson and his staff will take great care of you. Just call for an appointment today 405 535 5139. Going to that, it's always infectious when you have a lot of back and forth action going. Both teams trying to settle in, trying to find their own way. So far right now, the Falcons have done a good job of surviving the early storm. But man, the Eagles are getting the ball inside. And nice job so far early on by Webb and Greg on the inside, providing some defensive presence as we're back to live action now. It's almost like they have a same inside game presence like the girls. You know, it, it, it seemed like they work on helping them to be better on, in the post. Anderson Nelson scores the ball. Falcon lead now three, 5.17 to go. 
Pushing the ball into the front court now. Stop, pull up shot, no good. Rebound by the Bigs on the inside. Turn around, hook shot, no good. It's going to go out of bounds. It will be Falcon ball. Mm. Mm. That, 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 <laughs> that looked like it was deflected out by the Eagles, but. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it, you know. So now going to work. Now substitution. Nelson comes out, and Braylon Bradshaw checks in the game for the Falcons. He provides a little bit more size on the block. So, yeah, Barrett. No, I think Coach was kind of upset with uh, Anderson on his defense on that full-court press. Barrett kicks it back out over to Zahn. Zahn on the left wing, swings it, and nobody was there. Christopher, Lake, Christopher Clay flashed up top, but uh, nobody was home. Yeah, you can tell a difference when Wilkes is not in the game. You can always say his presence is definitely missed, you know, so hopefully he'll be entering the game soon. All right, going to work now. Ball being pressed to the outside. Ball fake inside. Shot high off the glass, no good. Barrett, Solomon Davis ends up with the rebound. And inside goes Clay. That, that's going to be deflected. Bradshaw gets the rebound. And the Falcons reset. Zon Williams on top. Bradshaw, pass to the corner. Amari Barrett, back up top. Reset. Coach Williams says he doesn't like the call. Reset the offense. New, new play. Falcons have Solomon Davis at the elbow. Bradshaw, ball fakes. Barrett, bounce pass over to Clay. Clay, three. Shot no good. Davis goes up high, fighting for the ball. Nothing doing there. Rebound. Eagles. Going to get knocked out of bounds, or is it going to be a foul? Oh, no. He called it off of uh, uh, Tucker's leg. He point this direction. He said it's our ball. He called blue ball. So, so now back to work. It will be Falcon basketball. Barrett inbounds it. Clay has it. Comes across the timeline. 3.44 to go. Falcons up by three. Left wing. Bounce pass over to Clay. Back <laughs> over to Barrett. Barrett does a lot of steps there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, he went to the Euro. I don't know why, but nonetheless, he doesn't has the ball knocked out of bounds. It will be Falcon basketball. They missed the traveling on there, too. So, you know, he, he definitely, uh, he's got to work on that. Uh, his traveling, he gets some. Zon Williams with the easy money play. Skies up and catches it on the inbounds and scores the ball. Do you get an assist on that? I think he should. I think he should. We're going to give it to him. Amari Barrett with the nice inlet pass. The old easy money play. Ball's going to be stolen that time by Christopher Clay. Up to Barrett. Barrett with the right hand in the basket, and he scores. Christopher Clay throws it up. Falcons have spurted ahead. Six straight points. Look at the ball around. Torrance inside. Contact. Hillman. As Hillman's going to go to the free throw line shooting two here. Who they're going to call the foul on? It's going to be called on Christopher Clay. That should be team foul number two, I do believe. Yeah, that's a good foul. That's a good foul. We'll see how they do free throw wise as well. Let's see if they're. So it's team foul number one. So Hillman knocks down free throw number one. 11 to 5. Substitution coming in the game is Eric Butler. He's in the game for what it looks like for Torrance. And Hillman knocks down free throw number two. 11 to 6, 6.57 to go. Falcons up by five, 2.55 to go. Zahn over to the right wing, over to Barrett. Barrett over to Clay on the left. Clay, steady dribble. Over to Zahn. Back to Clay. Clay looking for some space to operate. Barrett now has it on the left. Barrett finds a crease, drives to the lane, and the shot's going to be blocked by Butler. Butler tracked the ball and blocked the shot. Great job by Butler there. Yeah, that was an aggressive move by, uh, by Amari. And like I said, he got to continue to keep doing that. I like that. Ball back out to Zahn on the left wing to the corner. Barrett eyes the three. It's going to get bumped on the baseline by Greg. It's going to be team foul number two. So the Falcons set to inbound the ball now the from Eagles, the base. 
The Eagles have no senior. Well, they have one senior in the whole entire team. Actually, two. two. Two, okay. So the ball inbounded now. Zahn on the elbow, back over to Barrett. Barrett thought about the three, put it down, short corner jump shot. Back rims, no good. Rebound, pulled down, throwing the ball ahead, and there goes Butler to get it. Butler on the other end, scores the ball. Yeah, Barrett second-guessed himself. He should, he should have taken that shot when he had it. When you second-guess yourself, sometimes you don't always make a good Zion Williams shot. for three on the other end. And the three-point shot by Barrett, uh, by Williams is true. Assist on the play by Christopher Clay. Driving baseline, kicks it back out. Shot by Greg. Greg knocks down the two. 14-10, 145 to go. Barrett over to Zion Williams on the left wing. Barrett. Zahn has it on the left, back up to Barrett. Amari throws it to Christopher Clay. Clay bounce pass inside to Bradshaw, and contact's gonna be on the baseline. Is it gonna call Greg for the foul? Team foul number three, but it's gonna send Braylon Bradshaw to the line, shooting two. Bradshaw getting some quality minutes here, and you need some size and some girth. Hunter Webb and, and uh, Greg, both of them really can clog up the lane for you as Bradshaw does knock down free throw number one. He gets another one. And he knocks down free throw number two. 16-10, 127 to go. Here comes the Eagles. Eagles cross court over. Had to go up high to get that one was Turner. Back over to Hillman, bounce pass inside. And Greg almost loses it, but he's able to get it to Falcons trap. He escapes the trap. Ball's reflected and bouncing around and power game inside. He left at home without it. Ball ends up in the hands of the Falcons, steal by Solomon Davis. Here comes Barrett, Clay for three. Clay can't get it to fall. Zahn goes up to get it. And they're gonna call a foul. Foul's gonna be called against number three, Amari Barrett. Falcon foul number two. First personal foul by Amari Barrett. But I like that whole series. I mean, that, that's really good. Under a minute to go in the first. 50 seconds on the clock. Ball nearly stolen by Barrett. Cross court over to Turner. Turner bounce pass. It's gonna be stolen by Bradshaw. Bradshaw throws it up to Clay. Clay into the body. And is gonna score the basket as he scores it against Webb. Nice job by Chris Clay. Trap in the backcourt. Pass is going to be stolen by Solomon Davis, who gets it over to Zion. Clay for three. Oh. Misses that one. Rebound on that one by Hillman. They're having fun. They're having fun. 18, 10, you know? 17.3 seconds to go in the first. Zion not being selfish with the basketball. Right, trying to work the ball around the perimeter. Chris Clay has it. Ball fakes. Back over to the left wing to Zahn with 13 on the clock. Coach Williams is saying play for once. Solomon Davis gets it on the inside, and they're going to call a jump ball situation. Davis wasn't quite ready for the ball. And you got to have your hands in the middle of your chest, no matter where you are when you're big. You'll never know when you get it so you can go straight up. His hands were down low, allowed them to tie him up on that one. That, that, that's where we were, we were lucky last year with, a, with Carlos, you know, and so. Ball around the back, and they will not get a shot off as time expires at the end of 1-18-10 is the score. Your Falcons on top. You're listening to Millwood Falcon Basketball brought to you by Love's Travel Stops and Country Stores and SSM Health at St. Anthony's. Injuries don't wait for business hours. Now you can be seen 24-7 for sports injuries. Whether you have a sprain or a broken bone at the SSM Health Bone and Joint Injury Clinic at 13401 Northwestern.
Live action here as we start the second quarter here. Taking a look at the stats. The Falcons in the first quarter shot 7 of 13 and field goals 54%. 1 of 4 from deep 25. 6 of 9, 67%. Harding Charter Prep, first half of this one, first quarter of this one. As we back to live action, we have a substitution. We'll get to that in a minute. They shot 67%. Four of five from inside the painted area as Christopher Clay drives inside and Greg gets the rebound there. They only shot one attempt from three-pointers and that is how we start this off. Going back to work cross-court over. End of the game now for the first time. Isaiah Wilkes is back in the game. So is Adrian Anderson. Solomon Davis. Braylon Bradshaw is out. And Amari Barrett is, no, it Barrett, Barrett is very much in. Going back to work, Barrett drives to the baseline, kicks it out. Isaiah Wilkes, ball fakes, drives inside, hits with the runner. Sweet music coming from Isaiah Wilkes, who wastes no time and letting his presence be felt in the game. So, trap up top. Going to throw it. Left wing. Ball in the hands now of Hillman. Hillman. Travel. He's going to get called for a travel. The defense, I mean, they're very, they're very uh, aggressive. And, and, and the Eagles are not being able to handle the rock very well in terms of that. So, you get, the, okay. Basically, from my vantage point, I love what you're saying there. Because when they trap, what the, what the Falcons are doing is trapping along the wing. Mm -hmm. And their big guys are not used to handling the ball up high. So it's creating easy opportunities to flood the passing lane. And the Falcons are making them pay. And, they're, and, they're, and if you look at the spots of where they're trapping, right after they get past half court line. So now you got two extra defenders. You got the sideline plus you got the half court. So now it's, it's, it's even more. You got two extra people helping you on defense. Isaiah Wilkes kicks it to the outside. Anderson for three. He can't get it to fall. And Wilkes goes up. It's going to be a jump ball situation. So, tie up, no possession. 20 to 10, the Falcons have extended the lead. So trying to get the ball inbounded now is Des Nelson. And the ball's gonna be stolen by Christopher Clay. Clay earning minutes on the defensive end and is gonna count the basket with a chance to get the three-point play. Christopher Clay scoring the basket. Christopher Clay has four points on the night thus far. Can make it five if he can knock this free throw down. 6-17 to go. And he knocks it down. It's true. 23-10. Nelson kicks it over to Greg. Greg throws it back high above the circle. Torrance drives in line with the okie doke Barrett fighting for it, and Barrett comes up with the rebound. Ball in the hands of Wilkes, who hits the booster Jets and gets to the lane and scores on an easy left-handed layup. 25 to 10, the Falcons just keep pouring it on, and Isaiah Wilkes goes up high and knocks it out of bounds. Yeah, just intensely, he, he brings it even another level when he comes in, and so, uh, like I say, you talked about Solomon. Solomon, who has improved tremendously from last year. Uh, just so proud of the, uh, the effort and what he's doing. And with Solomon, he's, he's got to stay in the game. He can't get in foul trouble. So Zon Williams returns to the game. It's Barrett in the game. And looks like Nelson is, no, Nelson is in. So going to work now, high off the glass. Shot missed by Nelson, but he gets his own rebound. And then coming in, high hawking shot. It's going to be missed. Zahn goes to the other end, to the basket strong. He can't score. So now back the other way we go. So now, the amazing thing Amari about Barrett it. comes out and and Josiah Mays right. comes in. It's amazing how their bench is so deep that they can be able to bring it yeah, in. Yeah, I, I, I can hardly keep up on what's going on <laughs> on the right. other end. I mean, I'm trying to tell you, 
been a difficult situation. Torrance works around and gets Solomon Davis in the, puts him in the hot box and he scores it. Puts him in the washing machine. And a foul. That's a foul's going to be called against the Eagles. Foul's going to be called against number one, Des Nelson. No, I think they did 15, Butler. Okay, so Butler's going to get yeah. called with it. Eric Butler. So Eric Butler getting called with the foul there. So Solomon Davis is going to go to the free throw line here with a chance to shoot two. Solomon Davis hasn't been on, is not in the scoring column yet. I said yet. He's supposed to knock that down. He didn't. I got once that again, bad tonight. Once, I got that bad tonight. Again, you conversate while he's shooting. Okay, okay. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. I said yet. He, that means opportunity. He has another opportunity to knock it down. And he misses them both. Rebound pulled down that time. Working the ball around. Spin move by Hillman. Ball in the hands now of Torrance on the left wing. Torrance fires up a three. He can't get it to fall. Chased down by Greg. And that on the back end. Shot's going to be knocked down by number 35. I didn't catch who that is. But 25-14 and on the other end. Beep, beep. Isaiah Wilkes to the basket with blazing speed. 27-14. Wilkes has six. Didn't play a minute of the first quarter. Moving the ball around. Ball fake. Greg brings it down. Going to end up being stolen by Mays. Just Josiah Mays. Ball in the hand of Adrian Anderson. Anderson kicks it over, and the ball goes into the stands. Nice deflection that time by Hillman. Substitution. Bring another one in, and another one, and another one. There's so Josiah Mays, in. Amari Barrett returns in his behalf. Solomon Davis is out, and Kelston Young is in. Now working the ball around, Amari Barrett has the ball up high. Barrett. Standing on the logo, dribbling. Got to move it. And they're going to end up calling a timeout. Called now by Coach Dorian Williams. Going to call a full timeout. So that's Mark Presley, number 10. Mark Presley. Yeah, yes, okay. yes. I think, uh, I think 11 is, uh, is Kelston Young. Okay, so going to have to make that adjustment on my sheet. So... Number 10 is Mark Presley, okay? 27-14. Now, as we have this opportunity, we want to make sure we thank all our sponsors for tonight's game. Sunbeam Family Services, the Millwood and Richmond Foundation, First Security Bank, A-plus Lawn Services, Big O's Pork and Dreams, Chris and Christy Harrison of Heritage Funeral Home, David Threats Hair Cafe Cosmetology School, Wing Supreme, Narissa Berry Insurance Agency, Love Student of the Month, Super Prep, and Perry Publishing and Broadcasting Company. Maurice Prince and Director of Operations, Coach A. Shannon Hayes. You know, the intensity in the game, the Falcons just keep taking it to another level. They are not only matching the intensity that the Eagles have brought, they've taken it to another level. But it's not just being done on the offensive end, it's being done on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, there's probably one thing that concerns me <clears throat> is that when you have one big man like you had Solomon, and then you have you bring him outside of the and on the perimeter, when that shot goes out, you have you have to deal with rebounding. And so that's one thing I'm hoping that they can be able to adjust. Because really right now you got pretty much five guards on the floor. All right, Isaiah Wilkes working the ball around. He's standing on the logo to Amari Barrett. Barrett, back over to Isaiah Wilkes. Wilkes over to Barrett. Barrett, trying to work the ball around the perimeter there. Ball in the hands of Mark Presley. Kicks it to the corner, Zion Williams for three, and that shot's gonna be blocked. Second block on the night by the Eagles. That is Hillman with the block. Yeah, I'd, I'd like him to, to continue to move the ball and get a skip pass and attack, attack this zone. Ball up top to Amari Barrett. He's on the right wing. Dribbles back over. Isaiah Wilkes on the left wing. Staring it down. Looks like a 1-2-2. Two, two. 
being played. Uh, it's either that or so, yeah. It's, it's, As Amari Barrett drives down Main Street and scores the ball. Isaiah Wilkes with the assist on that one. Ball up high, now in the hands of Des Nelson on the right wing. Middle of the four goes Torrance. Torrance wheels and deals inside and draws contact. Wave off the shot. Foul's gonna be called. Gonna be called against Adrian Anderson Nelson. So now going to the free throw line is Merck Torrance. You know, I like their aggressiveness. Uh, I like knocked their, down free throw number one. I like their full court press, and they're, try, they're trying to keep them rattled. And right now, that's pretty much the, the thing is a lot of the turnovers that, that the Eagles are performing is because of the pressure that is being put on by, uh, by the Falcons. Hunter Webb returns to the game, and they go back big inside as Torrance knocks down the free throw. 29-16, three minutes to go. Zon Williams over to Wilkes in the corner. Wilkes looking for some space. Gets it over to Amari Barrett. Barrett sidesteps into the lane. Goes with the runner. Front rim, no good. He gets his own rebound. Ball's going to get knocked out of bounds, or it's going to be a foul call. Looks like that on, on Webb. It is. The foul's going to be called on, Greg. on, okay, on Daniel Gregg. So let me correct that. 29-16. Bounce pass inside, and Adrian Anderson Nelson. Assist by Z Zion, Does Zion get the, get, the, get the assist. Get the assist on that one, 31-16. Falcons up by 15, and Torrance goes to the lane. He can't finish. Rebound was by number 33, which is Hunter Webb with the rebound. And then a foul is going to be called against number 10, uh, Mark Presley. Mark Presley. Team foul number three for this quarter now. 2.30 to go. Back rims on that one by Webb. Checking out of the game now goes Daniel Gregg. And returning to the game is Josiah Giroux. Back rims, no good. Rebound by Amari Barrett. Barrett gets it over to, to Nelson. Inside to Presley. Kicks it in the corner. Isaiah Wilkes for three. And it's true. Isaiah Wilkes knocks down the three. Mark Presley with the assist. Bounce pass over to Hillman. Hillman kicks it to the corner. Pass over to Torrance. Torrance on the right wing, looking for space to operate. Zahn steps out on him. Falcons in man-to-man -man defense right now. Barrett gives it back up to Torrance at the top. Contact inside. Looks like they're going to call that on Mark Presley. Team foul number four. One more will be one and one. Coming up. Inbounds. Over. Three-point shot. Back rims no good by Tucker. Hmm, let me see who they call this on. Oh, wow. Foul's going to be called against Mark Presley. All right, that's five. That's so five. That's five. He's got five. Yeah, that's five, five fouls, so he get two shots. Yeah. So free throws coming now. As at the 15 foul, so Hunter Webb going to the line shooting two. New rule, high school basketball. Fouls get reset, and as soon as you get to your first foul, it's two free throws for each team. But if the way you're looking at it is you don't really go one on one, it's really 10 team fouls and a half, and it's two sh and it's shots coming after that. Yeah, but no longer the one and one. No, but no longer no, no one and one. Mm -hmm. So free throw is there. Knocks down both. Good form by the big guy, by Hunter Webb. To the basket, goes flying, goes Wilkes. Solomon Davis gets the rebound. Contact's going to be made. Yeah, I thought he was over the back on that one, but uh, I guess he went straight up and didn't get blocked out. 
That was good by Solomon. He runs the floor. I mean, his, his footwork is so much better. Um, he feels comfortable in what he does. And I, I think that's the one thing that I like about his game. Um, Davis at the free throw line has one more. And he knocks it down. 36-18. I can finally say it. I didn't mention it. Solomon Davis knocked down two free throws. So the jinx is off. It's off. It's off. All right. So now going to work, Torrance. <laughs> Torrance has it. Going to hand off to Hill. Inside pass. Swings it back out to DeRoe. DeRoe shoots it. He can't get it to fall. But rebound by the Eagles. And then working himself inside goes Merv Torrance. He can't get it to fall. Rebound coming down the other end by Anderson Nelson who tries to go coast to coast. He can't score the basket. Rebound. Eagles. Under a minute to go. 36-18. Oh, travel. Going to get called for travel here. Like I say, this defense, this pressure that the Falcons are putting on the Eagles, it is, it is it's like it's, it's busting pipes. You know, it's, it's pressure and they're, 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 they're rattled. And so it's, it's like you got seven folk on the own, seven versus five pretty much, you know, in terms of their defense right now. 36-18, 41 seconds to go. Amari Barrett to Isaiah Wilkes, who's got a crease. And he's going to drive inside, going to draw a foul on Josiah DeRoe. So that should be foul number nine, or foul number four of the quarter. <laughs> but it's a two-shot foul situation. So returning the game goes Greg. Out of the game comes DeRoe. You know, I noticed something in Kansas. They kept counting the fouls. You know, one, two, three, four, and they got the six, seven, eight. They didn't change that. They just kind of kept it. The they same just kept number. just kept the same yeah. number up there. Mm -hmm. Turnover by Amari Baird on the other end, and then turnover. the turnover by, by the Eagles mm -hmm. by Greg. Mm -hmm. So 30.3 seconds to go. Let's see what Coach Dorian Williams wants the Falcons to do here. Wilkes into the front court, standing on the logo or dribbling on the logo, I should say, with 21 on the clock. 21, 21. Inside to Anderson, Nelson. Zahn Williams for three. Shot no good by Zahn. Rebound, Eagles, seven seconds on the clock. Working the ball around the top. Inside, pulling up with one second on the clock. Beautiful shot by Hillman as time expires. It's 36 to 20. Yeah, and, and, I, and, and to me, you should always play for that last second shot. You know, there's no way they should have gotten this ball. Don't give them opportunities. And opportunities. I mean, there's so many things that can happen. An example is they score. Uh, what if we got down and got an extra foul on one of our players last second? So you, you got to be able to be, play smart at the end of those quarters and realize that you don't want to give them any more possessions, any more opportunities if you can. All right, time for us to hit a break. Millwood and Richmond Foundation Halftime Report coming up next. You're listening to Millwood Basketball, sponsored by SSM Health of St. Anthony and Love's Travel Stops and Country Stores. Fat butt. Everybody been hearing about it on the radio. Uh, you can come to my Midwest City location, 6003 Southeast 15th, or you can go to my admin, 285 South Santa Fe. Come get you one of these taters. Oklahoma City, I'm Miles Perry, and I want you to listen to my show, Super Prep Live. 
Super Prep Live takes an in-depth look at the Oklahoma high school student athlete and what makes he or she become great at what they do. Super Prep Live can be heard on OKC's CBS Sports Radio 105.3 and Instagram Live. Make sure you tune in and learn about the next great student athlete on Super Prep Live with me, Miles Perry. Injuries don't wait for business hours. Now you can be seen 24-7 for sports injuries. Whether you have a sprain or a broken bone at the SSM Health Bone and Joint Injury Clinic at 13401 Northwestern. Welcome to the Millwood and Richmond Foundation Halftime Report. The Enrichment Foundation is raising $25,000 to help take care of their teachers and scholarships for its Millwood students. Help make a positive difference in investing in our jewel institution, Millwood Public Schools. You can make a contribution at Cash App, dollar sign Millwood Enrich OKC. That's dollar sign Millwood Enrich OKC. Whether it's $5, $10, you have a chance to do that. And if you're sitting here thinking, why aren't we talking about the game? Well, this is not the game. <laughs> Coach Hayes and I are experiencing, if you're watching online, it is the ever-popular indoor court cheerleader battle. And right now, I, I will say this, the home crowd is trying desperately to support their team. Yes, yes. The Millwood, the Millwood team is holding its own, as they always do. But it's always interesting because one thing I, I, 
I, I want to talk about the game. <laughs> I, I don't want to describe cheerleader battles. That's just not my specialty. Well, but it, well, it's funny because the their team, the, the Eagles, are staying off the floor because they're waiting for the <laughs> finish up the battle between the cheerleaders. Exa exactly. <laughs> so 3 four, team to go. So now the Falcons are trying to talk to the team. All right, taking a look at the statistics right now. So as we're looking at the numbers, the Eagles shot 7 of 13, 54% from the floor. 0 of 3 from 3, 11 rebounds, 10 turnovers in the first half, 1 assist, 6 of 8 from the free throw line. For the Falcons, from the floor, 12 of 20 from the field goals, 60%. 2 of 8 from 3, 25%. Eight rebounds, so they're minus three on rebounds, but you can be minus three on rebounds when you're up 16 on the scoreboard. Absolutely. There's not that many to rebound if you're if you're putting the ball in the basket. Mm -hmm. Eight assists compared to their one, and the Falcons are six of eight from the free throw line, 75% as well. But I also want to note that the Falcons are forcing, because I said the Eagles have 10 turnovers, mm -hmm. the Falcons force six of those with steals. The high Falcon, how about Isaiah Wilkes, who comes in on the second quarter for a smooth nine points overall. And then from the perspective of points, Zon Williams had eight points on the afternoon thus far in this game. So a minute 54 to go, but those are your two high-flying Falcons in the first half of this game. What stood out to you? Time to do a first security bank evaluation of what you saw in the first half. What's your thoughts? I mean, I was pretty much impressed on all levels. Uh, I mean, defensive-wise, uh, offensive-wise, I mean, free throw line, besides you talking to Solomon, we probably could be eighth rate, you know, but uh, it's like every every aspect of what I was hoping that they would continue to, to, to do, they did. And so that's, that's the exciting part about it, is that allowing them, and then like I say, they, they can go deep in their bench, and, and there's nothing that falls off. They continue to keep that same intensity, that level. So if, if you ever got into foul trouble or anything like that, you've got guys that can come off and do that. So, I mean, I, I, I think it to me was a well complete, you know, first half. Um, especially, like I say, with, with, with Wilkes not coming, coming off the bench, not starting. Just think if he'd have been in that first quarter, maybe it would have been even more of a, of, a, of a different game. I agree. So in this particular case, you know, I, I will talk about one of the guys that you said you wanted to talk about at the beginning of the game, Amari Barrett. Amari Barrett, he does a lot of things that don't show up on the stat line, but he controls a lot of the flow, a lot of the energy, a lot of the want-to plays, the effort plays. There's not a stat for that, but to me, that's impressive, his impact on the game. Well, you know, and, and it's kind of funny because – Amari reminds me, because he's a sophomore, he actually reminds me of Bubba Davis when he was a sophomore. Just to kind of give you an example, you know, Bubba wasn't like aggressive, but he did a lot of things that, that were in the background that people didn't kind of understand. That impacts winning basketball. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And so that's kind of what uh, uh, Amari does. I'm, I'm going to tell you what I'm excited about. I'm going to be excited on Monday when the football team players come out. I think practice is going to be more exciting than the games. I, I think you're right because there's going to be – I'm not going to say a lot more. It's just going to be an intense practice situation. So the Falcons start off the second half here with Zon Williams, Christopher Clay, Isaiah Wilkes, Solomon Davis, Amari Barrett on the floor. And for, and for the Eagles, you've got Hillman, Torrance, Greg, Webb, and driving to the basket, Olay defense being played there as Isaiah Wilkes gets the, into double digits with 11. They throw it up now to Tucker. Tucker for three, and he drains a three. That's confidence. That's confidence because you had, you had a way to go to the basket, and you stepped up and hit the three. 38-23, 7.25 to go. Wilkes. From the left wing, fancy dribbling, cuts inside, kicks it to the corner. Zion Williams back over to Isaiah on the handoff. Solomon Davis on the right wing. Christopher Clay draws contact at the top. They're going to call a foul on Tucker. 
It's going to be the first foul of the second half. First foul. Remember, after five, you have two free throws. Yeah, Clay's game is, is one of those that, that's evolving also another sophomore. Great point. Mm -hmm. Great point. He was a, primarily a good effort guy last year. He always gave you effort. Mm -hmm. He always put effort on the defensive end, and he was a three-point specialist. Now he's mixing it up on the inside. He's gotten stronger. As Isaiah goes up high and lays it in nicely. Isaiah Wilkes again scoring. That's point number 13 on the night for him. Isaiah almost creates the turnover there. And it's going to be a foul called on Amari Barrett there. Team foul number one. His second foul on the night, I do believe. So going to inbound the ball. Goes DJ Hillman. Hillman gets it inside to Webb. Nice ball fake turnaround. Shot no good for Tucker inside the lane. He misses the... And the ball's going to go out, and it will be Eagle Ball. 17-point lead right now for the Eagles. They get it in bounds. Ball's going to be stolen by Barrett this time. Barrett with the steal. And, and Wilkes the with the and one. Beautiful. <laughs> Wilkes darts to the basket. And like I said, Wilkes will get behind the defense quick. He is silky smooth. 42-23, Wilkes with 15 points. And he makes it look easy. He does, he does. And you got to have control because when you're going that fast, you still got to have a soft touch to where it don't bounce off the backboard. And, and, and he just, he, he has developed that really well. Ball around in the hands now of Greg. Greg to the corner, three-point shot is true for Anthony Tucker. Tucker knocks it down. Nice assist on the play also. Ball in the hands of Clay. Gets it down to Zon Williams. Zon inside. Solomon Davis misses, gets his own rebound, gets it up high off the glass and draws the contact. And a foul with a chance to go to the free throw line. When I see, when I see uh, Solomon dunk, I'm, I'm, I'm giving it up. Oh, you are? <laughs> I mean, he almost got one there. He, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't know if he was doing it. I was like, man. I would have liked to have seen him. So going to work now, Solomon Davis misses the first free throw. He gets one more. Yeah. Solomon Davis knocks it down. And that's the one thing about that five foul. You know, you're going you're gonna to get a chance to where you're going to be able to at least get two fouls, two shots when it gets in the bonus. Team foul situation. It's three to one right now. Eagles got three. Three-point shot by Ooh. Greg. I think it got blocked. I think Wilkes got a piece of that. Wilkes got, a, got the block on the play. Not and on the other the end. Clinic. They're, they're, they're just. Who made the basket on the other end? That was Zon Williams. Zon Williams with the quick two. Mm -hmm. So 45-26 now. The Eagles set to inbound the ball. 5.26 to go in the third. Merv Torrance has it. Ball fakes, drives inside. Tries to finish with the left hand, draws contact. He will Ooh. get a foul. Mm. I guess I could have went anyway. I'll say that, but I thought that was definitely a... So Zon Williams gets called for the foul. Might be his first foul of the night. But Torrance to the free throw line. Torrance calmly takes it. Takes his time. First free throw is true. 45-27. One more. Nice soft touch and release. So Torrance knocks down back-to-back -back free throws. Here comes Isaiah Wilkes across the timeline. Wilkes. 
standing on the logo. Wilkes trying to draw a screen. Mari Berry ball fakes, drives in the oh. lane, finishes down low, and Solomon Davis is going to get called for. Is he going to oh. get fouled on the floor? There's a foul. There's a foul on the floor. Oh, on the floor, okay. Foul's going to be called against number 15. That's Butler getting called for the foul that time. But it's foul on the floor right now. And Barrett comes in, fires a three-point shot off the inbound play. He misses. Rebound. And driving up the court, the ball's going to be deflected out of bounds. They say Christopher Clay got it. I don't know if he did or not. As Tucker was flying down the court. I'm not sure he had control. Uh, yeah, I don't think that was off Clay. But um, this game is so fast-paced, you know, you can't get a transition quick enough to be in the right position to see it. Hillman pulls up for a nice jump shot in the short corner. And he knocks it down. Drops the lead down to 15. Wilkes, nobody in the defense. Nice bounce pass to the inside. Solomon Davis scores it off the Isaiah Wilkes assist. Good finish, good finish. Across the timeline now, Torrance gets it back up to Hillman. And Hillman lets it bounce off his leg. It will be... Eagle ball. Lead back up to 17 now. Yeah, I like the Eagles, man. They're fighting. You know, they're not giving up. I mean, they're constantly, like I say, uh, those threes from Tucker kind of got them more back into the game, jolting, because it was up to almost a 23-point lead. So uh, Anderson Nelson comes in, Adrian Anderson Nelson. And he comes in and he shoots a three. Shot no good by Nelson, he misses it. And they're gonna say the ball was knocked out, no one had possession, and it will be Falcon ball. They're gonna bring it in from the baseline. And, and Adrian's having a, a, an off night because at the tournament last week, he scored the first uh, three-pointer, <laughs> the first basket, which was a three-pointer of all three games. And Zion with the blow-by to the basket, he goes and scores. Zion Williams into double oh, wow. digits now. And on the steal. And again, Christopher Clay coming through with the steal. Can't nope. get the shot to fall. Zion Williams gets it. That, that, that was a true steal. That was a, I mean, he literally just took the rip the ball from him. And the Falcons just being mean out there. Force another turnover. And the coach is making wholesale substitutions now. As Mar Marion comes into the game. The Falcons are going to inbound the ball. Samari Barrett gets it into Clay. Clay back over to Barrett. Barrett, ball fakes, gets it down to Anderson. Anderson drives to the lane, goes up high. Shot was contested, no good. Rebound by Barrett, he misses the two. Rebound goes to... The Eagles, and on the other end, nice, easy basket by Torrance. And now we're now we're getting two shots. Okay, so now two shots coming. It's team foul number five was called as Wilkes was going to the basket, so Wilkes is going to go to the free throw line shooting two. Wilkes lines up a free throw and drains it. 52-32, Falcons have eclipsed the 20 plateau again. Falcons in the bonus. Mm, lane violation. So lane violation, wave it off. Zahn got a little excited. So when you got to know, hey, Wilkes is not going to miss that free throw. He's pretty. He's a pretty good free throw shooter. You, you live with the results yes. when you have a guy like that. Mm -hmm. Going to work now. Trap in the backcourt. And Amari Barrett steals it. Kicks it over to Wilkes in the corner. He misses the three. Balls back tap out. But the Falcons maintain possession. Adrian Anderson drives inside. Nobody can test him. And contact's going to be made as Marion blocks the shot to the free throw line. And Marion is sitting there. Got to get over that one. You had your hands 
over the ball. Yeah, and see the way that, uh, that Anderson came in, he squared his body up, so he had to basically go over him in order to try to get the block. So he's going to either get him with the body or he's going to get him with the arm. So whichever one you want to choose, he fouled them on both of them. 21-point lead now for the Falcons. Going to try and make it 22. Anderson looking for point number six. Back rims the second one. Rebound patrolled by Amari Barrett. And then he's going to get called for steps. 53-32, substitution coming into the game. Daniel Gregg comes in. Marion comes out. Or Marin, not Marion, but Marin comes out. Excuse me. Working the ball is going to be tapped out of the hands of Webb. Still will be Falcon ball. Oh, I'm sorry, it will be Eagle ball. Eagles, Falcons. <laughs> yeah, I was going to do the bird of the feather earlier, but it just it just didn't work. Mm -hmm. Pulling up from the elbow or stopping this dribble at the elbow. Getting the ball down low goes Webb, and Webb takes to the basket strong, and he scores. <laughs> 53-34. Wilkes from the right wing. Contact, or it's going to be a five-second call against Wilkes. Wilkes stands in disbelief. Now, I'm disbelieved, too, because, because I mean, he was moving. He was moving. He was moving. So that, that, that can't be a, a five-second call. All right, working the ball around. Torrance pulls up with the runner and drops it in. 53-36. Clay from the right wing. Dribble above the circle over to Barrett. Barrett. Barrett drives in the lane, tries to hit him with the with the scoop shot. But the foul's going to be called against Webb. So back to the free throw line. That is Webb's second foul, but Amari Barrett going to the free throw line for the first time. Barrett back rims the first one. One fifty-seven to go. And he misses them both. Rebound pulled down by the Eagles. One fifty-two to go. Ball in the hands of Webb. Back over to Torrance. Merv Torrance dribble, double team. Barrett with the steal. Oh, that's a push. That's got to be and a And they're going to call a push on the back against Webb. So back to the free throw line, and this time it's going to send Zon. Zon Williams to the free throw line, shooting two. So the officials are talking now. I'm not sure what they're discussing here. So Zahn at the free throw line again. Front rims the first one. Falcons not doing so well from the free throw line the second half of this one. They, they seem to be, of course, a little bit disengaged right now. They are three of nine in the second half of this game on the free throw line. Make that three of ten. Rebound. Pulled down by the Eagles. Trying to go in strong and drawing a foul. Isaiah Wilkes is going to get called for the foul. Team foul number three. Timeout's been called on the floor. So it's a 30-second timeout. We'll stay right here. That's a Timeout sponsored by A-Plus Lawn Services. Would you like your home lawn or business lawn to look green, full, and healthy? Then call the professionals at A-Plus Lawn Services. 
405-535-5139. That's 405-535-5139. Maurice Prince and Director of Operations, Coach Shannon Hayes, on this call this evening, the Falcons have been really strong this quarter or in this game. Now, it's interesting. The Falcons outscored them 18 to 10 in the first and in the second. But in the third quarter, it's 17 to 16. But it really doesn't feel like they're keeping pace. It feels like the lead meticulates high. They make a couple of key shots here and there. And then things change as we're back to live action. Yeah, I think that, that six points from Tucker, those threes, I think that was, was huge for them. Ball's going to get deflected out of bounds and will remain Eagle ball, 126 to go. You're right. You're absolutely right by that because those two three-pointers gave them a big boost mm -hmm. of momentum. It hasn't affected the scoreboard at all because if you're watching the game, you're like, the Falcons haven't been tested since the early part of this game, and that's true. Because I don't think we've made a three-point shot second half. I'll verify that as Nelson has the ball. And again, Torrance shoots a three. He can't get it to fall. Rebound on the play by Webb. And then Webb tries to score the baby hook shot. Rebound pulled down by Zahn Williams. So now on the other end, it's going to be another foul. Oh, let's see here. Are they going to say the ball was out of bounds? Yeah, no, it's jump ball. Ah, jump ball. Mm -hmm. Okay, tie up. Here come the Falcons. 1-0-4 to go in the third. Zahn drives baseline and scores. Zahn's been heating up a little bit here. Assist by Isaiah Wilkes. Both Isaiah and Zahn got 16 points apiece now. But the one thing I notice about Zahn, when, when um, Isaiah's not in there, he steps up and tries to be the leader. And then when Nelson uh, for two. Isaiah comes in, he backs up, and he kind of plays a role player. And only when he needs to will he will he shoot and be, be aggressive. Barrett's going to get called for steps. He was bumped, but he's going to get called for steps. So my question is to you, now that we're having, you know what, there's 29 seconds in the third. Let's see if this conversation for the fourth. Okay. 55-38 to go. 55-38 is the score, I'm sorry. 25 seconds to go. Ball on the left wing. That's a five-second. Swing the ball around. <laughs> now, that other one was a five-second. That, that was definitely a five-second. That definitely was a five-second call. Ball in the hands of Webb. Now pulling up with a nice jump shot is Turner. Turner back rim shot no good. Rebound on that one. Barrett comes with the rebound. One second on the clock. Zahn goes up. Cannot score as time expires in the third quarter. But the Falcons up 55 to 38. We'll be back for the start of the fourth quarter. You're listening to Millwood Falcon Basketball brought to you by Love's Travel Stops and Country Stores and SSM Health at St. Anthony. hours. Now you can be seen 24-7 for sports injuries. Whether you have a sprain or a broken bone at the SSM Health Bone and Joint Injury Clinic at 13401 Northwestern. As we start the fourth quarter, back to live action here. Eight minutes is on the clock effectively, and here we go. On the floor for the Falcons right now. Chris Clay, Adrian Anderson, Nelson, Amari Barrett, Zon Williams, and Isaiah Wilkes. 
Ball's going to be knocked out of bounds, and it will be. I think they're going to say it goes to the Falcons. They're going to go to the Eagles. They're trying to turn the ball over. They're going to say it's Millwood ball. Mm. The official overruled. Difficult situation, 7.44 to go. So my conversation is the continuity that this team has built early in the season is strong chemistry. Mm -hmm. You're saying everybody kind of understands the give and the go as Adrian Anderson Nelson drives to the lane and scores. Nice assist by Zon Williams on the play. He's got seven. Foul's going to be called on Adrian Anderson Nelson there. That is the first foul of the fourth quarter. So 7.29 to go. My question is, when you get the star power, the Zaire Fishers back, the Jaden Nickens, the Chance Davises, and Robert Wilson, how do you envision the best way to incorporate this team back, you know, how do you envision getting them all together? Well, you know, this is just my my observation. How would you do it? Um, I Like I say, I would start with the starting five that you have been going and automatically, depending on how practices go, but really giving them a chance to kind of uh, kind of evolve into the uh, into the uh, system. Foul because what's be called against Christopher Clay? Keep going. Because what's going to happen is that it's it's going to evolve. It's going it's going to expose itself. You're going to really see. I mean, you know, Stevie wanted to be able to say the five that need to be on the floor. Where, where how that chemistry works? It, it it's going to take a minute, and and so it'll take a few games. Then you got the Christmas break to kind of work on some things, and then really and truly, I don't feel that you get into a good spot until after that Christmas break, where you've been able to kind of see how they are. I mean, because like I say. You've got four kids that automatically can come on the floor right now. And, I mean, out of, out of, well, I'll say out of respect, you know, you want to start these kids. But those four kids coming in going to change the whole game as well, too. All right. I, I think that's going to be interesting because one of the things in Millwood's first championship under Coach Jeffries at the time, as the second free throw is knocked down, is he instituted more of a system that looked like the Kansas Jayhawks where you had, especially in the playoffs, is Mark Presley is in the game now. And I'm trying to see who he's in the game for. But Solomon Davis is back in. Adrian Anderson Nelson's in. Isaiah Alk, so Amari Barrett is out. And so that's what draws. And Zon Williams is out. Mark Presley into the game. Presley goes 0 for 2 at the free throw line. But the Falcons are able to get the rebound. Who got the rebound that time? Uh, rebound was by uh, number 4. So that is Josiah Mays. So the Falcons maintain possession of the ball. Working the ball around the top of the circle, ball to the left wing. Fancy dribbling to the inside. Solomon Davis lines up a three-point shot. And it is true for the big man. Davis gets it from Isaiah Wilkes. Solomon Davis has eight on the night. Over to Merv Torrance, who drives inside, tries to finish with a reverse shot, no good. And then contact as Hunter Webb got it. Got the rebound, tried to put it back, but a foul's going to be called. Foul's going to be called against Mark Presley. That's his fourth. <laughs> he ain't taking no fouls home tonight. <laughs> no, 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 no. He believes that they need to go ahead and go with him. Exactly. <laughs> 6.15 left to go in the contest here. So one of the interesting things here is, let me just throw this, this combination on the floor. Could you imagine Zon Williams, Isaiah Wilkes, Jade Nickens, and Chance Davis on the floor? The reason why, and I mean, you could mix in any other players that you want to mix in as Mark Presley comes out, and it looks like Jamari Moore is coming in the game for him. But can you imagine having a combination where you've got three-point penetration, range, you've got some, you know, some guys 
who could put the ball on the floor strong. What kind of offense would you expect to get out of that one? Well, the offense pretty much would be a, they just would take turns. I mean, <laughs> that, that would be, okay, your turn, you know what I mean? Because really and truly they can execute uh, each one of them. I, I, like I say, I, I think it becomes a, 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 a to me, you, you have five on the floor. So you got four coming from football. So there's automatically one that's going to stay on the floor. I think that one that stays on the floor would be, be Isaiah Wilkes. I think he'd be that fifth one of that starting if you take the four from, uh, from football. Then you turn around, but, but you got a match between, um, like I say, Barrett, who I think could automatically step in for, for Bubba. You know, I think that uh, also uh, Adrian Anderson could step in for, for, uh, for Wilson. I mean, so you've got some people that can kind of match up if you, if you have to step into some different scenarios. True, and that's what you're going to have, match up and scenarios on how you want to play. How do you think it's going to be for those guys? You know, you're coming in. Now, grant you, there's going to be a lane violation. Okay, the foul's going to be against Jamari Moore. So the second free throw will not count. Jamari Moore getting called for the foul there. But I find it interesting, coming into a system, you know, what's one of the differences as number 14? Devereaux. Devereaux knocks down the three-point shot. Well, you know, also. I mean, for, for, for Dorian Williams' system, for those guys and that talent, what do you think the main difference is going to be? Well, I, I think, well, one thing is that it's going to determine on who you play. I mean, so that, that can also kind of uh, kind of rule some things out and how you need to do that. But it's like uh, you, you I, I think you, you try to play to, to each one of the kids' strengths um, and you try to put them in a position where they can all gel together. Uh, like I said, I mean, you can put five guards on the floor, man, and just see what happens. I mean, it's, I mean, to me, it's like a, it's like a smorgasbord for him. Well, I mean, it, it, it's just, and, you know. And here's the thing I think that's more relevant this year than any other year. Even without the star four players, as that three-point shot is missed there by Devereaux, Jamari Moore gets the rebound. Wilkes shoots ahead. Kicks it over to Mays. Mays goes with the Euro step. Front rims can't get it to go. Solomon Davis tries to get it. He can't get it to go. And so substitutions coming in again. So Isaiah Wilson comes in. Solomon Davis's day is done. So looks like Isaiah Wilkes's day is done. So we've got Braylon Bradshaw back in the game as well. So now triggering the ball goes Isaiah Wilson. Wilson gets it in to Adrian Anderson Nelson who scores it. 63-42. But to my point, as Torrance gets fouled, Merv Torrance goes to the foul, going to the basket, going to call the foul on Josiah Mays. That's foul number five, so Torrance is going to go to the line shooting two. What I, was going to, what I was trying to say is ball handlers. Mm -hmm. Is this one of the best ball handling teams? Could it be? Because we haven't seen the team yet. Ball handling teams above the perimeter. You've got Wilkes who's shown it. Adrian Barrett has shown himself game to be able to handle the ball above the perimeter. We already know Zion Williams is a good ball handler. Then you in institute in Zaire Fisher, who last year was maybe considered a primary primary uh, ball handler along with uh, you know Jay Nickens now bounce pass to the inside and then Torrance goes inside he can't get it to score or can't get it to drop Nelson grabs the rebound Nelson into the front court inside to Moore and Jamari Moore scores the two on the Adrian Anderson Nelson assist 65-42 Ball off, it's going to be stolen by Isaiah Wilson. Wilson goes to the basket, he's going to be scored by Marin. So, so here, here's the thing. This is, let, me, let me throw this wrinkle in to you. All right. Please just, do. Just, just think if Zion had not got injured in the, in the middle of the year. 
and we got to see how he played with all of them superstars last year. I think it would have been not as muddy water. I still think, you know, you still got a few that will emerge from, from the starting now. We know Wilkes, like I say, but Zahn to me is that one that we never got a chance last year to be able to get in that mix to see how it works. So I think it makes more of a challenge to see where his, his position is. But Zaire Fisher, uh, to me, well, the one thing that, that the, the five coming, four coming off the, uh, off the field is they've got experience. All of them, if you notice, all five of the players that start for us, they don't have that experience deep in the playoffs and everything that those four gentlemen got. So that's the one thing that they can be able to do. And, and like I say, you know, Zaire was was MVP of one of the games. I mean, he not only point guard, but scored points to get us to where we finished the contest. So I think that there's just some variables that would have been nice to see, and I think it would have been a little bit more clear to say, okay, you know, you got two or three, but with Zahn, he's kind of that, that, that X factor that you got to kind of see how he plays in that role. Does that, you know? No, I think it makes perfect sense because we're speculating on things we haven't seen. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think if you're listening to this game or watching this game tonight, as Bradshaw misses the jump shot there, rebound by the Eagles, that this should be exciting talk because we're playing, it's, it's, it's I don't know. It's like having, I don't know. It's having the perfect salad and then I bring you the steak to go with it. It's the perfect combination of things for me. Whatever toppings you want on your pizza. Mm -hmm. If you said you, the pie is good or the sweet potato pie is good, give me some ala mode. That's what the Falcons are literally dealing with. With another level this team can go to. And we know that early as Bradshaw's shot is blocked. And on the other end, Marin scores the basket. 67-44 now. 2.45 to go. Mays has it. Throws it cross court over to Wilson. Over to Moore. Moore powers inside and scores again. Moore's got that strong upper body, and you're going to have to get into him to stop yeah. him on the block. Yeah, he's, he's got a body there. He's, he's solid. <laughs> Working the ball around. Three-point shot. Bounces, but Marin gets the rebound. Turns around and shoots and scores the ball. Forty-nine or sixty-nine, forty-six. Nice pass as Bradshaw scores the ball on an assist from Moore. And the pass the shot is no good. Ball on the side to Mays. Mays draws in, pulls up. And a bank shot. Mm, mm. Tim Duncan would have been proud of that one. Yeah, exactly. 73-46, 138 to go. So I think it's exciting because the next level of this team could be mind-boggling. Mm -hmm. The pieces that you have coming in. I mean, I, I, I'm trying to come up with the whole object of this, but it's, it's the equivalent if you're a Dallas Cowboy fan, Dak Prescott gets hurt and you bring in Patrick Mahomes. I mean, <laughs> off the bench. I mean, you got that type of level of talent. From the, back, from the basketball mind, okay, fine. Going to the basket strong, a nice score there by Devereaux. Not only do you got a Patrick Mahomes, you got a young Patrick Mahomes. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> or, you know, Kevin Durant gets hurt which is bound to happen at some time, and you replace him. Devin Booker. With Devin, you know, mm -hmm. with Devin Booker or anybody mm -hmm. else you want to put. That's the same team, but if I said you replace him, uh, you lose, you lose, you know, a scoring machine, and you replace him with another star. I mean, it's, it's just that impressive to see. Well, you know, so I was, um, I was uh, talking to uh, Chop today, and, uh, I uh, told him, I said, hey, um, you know, you, you've coached a lot of superstars over the years. And, and, and he's had to deal with 
this type of, of talent and, and, and how, how do you make it work? And so I think if, if, if anybody could maybe share some, some, some light on it to, to Coach Williams, I think it would be Chop. You know, just to kind of say, how, do you, how, did, how did you do that? How, did, how do you make it work uh, without personalities, without parents complaining about playing time? Well, you know, you, you got all those things that you got to kind of. Yo, everybody, kind of you know, that's, that, that to me is another conversation in itself because the parents have got to be patient with this team as much as anybody else mm -hmm. does mm -hmm. because this is a team that, Everybody will get to contribute, but there's so much talent here. Everybody has to be given a chance to try and play. And, I, I, again, now as a parent, everybody has to understand that you don't go from here and you go to the, you're go to you not going to the NBA right away. Mm -hmm. So I think you got to let this build. There's a nice steal by Richards on the play. And on the other end, there goes Josiah May scoring the two off the Richards assist. 76-49. Jump ball situation, and it will be Eagle basketball. 38.4 seconds to go. All right, going to work now. Ball in the hands now of Tyler Wynn. Dribbling on top is Butler. Butler gets it to win in the corner. Back up top to Nelson. With 24 seconds on the clock, Nelson tries to go with the blow by, but Marin scores the ball. Seventy-six, fifty-one, 12 seconds to go. Ball in the hands now of Richards. Ball in the hands now of Wilson with four seconds on the clock. And that will be the final call of tonight's game. 76 to 51 is the final score of tonight's game. As the Falcons are victorious. And you have to be happy about the Falcons outcome of this game. Give me your overall take. Sponsored by First Security Bank making Dreams of becoming a business owner or a homeowner come true. Call them 405-424-4341. They're a member of FDIC, an African-American owned bank. Give me your final take on today's game if you had to have one. Well, I mean, like I say, I, I think that on every aspect uh, besides the second half of the free throws, other than that, I mean, I think it was a pretty complete game. Uh, I, and like I say, you got a chance to really go deep into your bench. Um, you got to kind of see some different scenarios and some different personnel as you kind of switch people out, see how they work. Um, so, I mean, I, I think, you know, I, I'd, I'd be pretty pleased, you know, with, with their performance tonight. There's always room to grow and to work on. Um, there's a few of the kids that need to kind of work on some individual things. But for overall, as a team, I think, I think they did a good job. I think they did a great job. Taking a look at the final team stats today, as a team, the Falcons shot – from the floor, 27 of 46. It sounds like the girls game, when I give this percentage, they shot 59% from twos. <laughs> from threes, three of 12, 25%. So not the greatest percentage for that. But then on free throws, they could work on that. You talked about that. 13 to 25, 52%. That, that, if you had to say, okay, give me an ugly number that they have to find to work things on, that would definitely be it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of uh, rebounding tonight, the team finished with 24 rebounds tonight, one block, 12 steals, and seven turnovers, as, as, as my count goes. Mm. Um, but overall, the team outscored them in the, four, in the fourth, 21 to 13, reasserting its dominance in the game. So now looking at the point totals for tonight as we get ready to pick our super prep and big O's pork and dreams player of the game as we are in the SS him health at St. Anthony post game show. Isaiah Wilson, two points, two assists overall in the contest with one steal. Zon Williams, 16 points, three assists in the contest. Isaiah Wilkes, 17 points, four assists, one block in the game. Amari Barrett, 
I love his stat line. There's not a lot, there's not a box with not something in it. Six points, three assists, eight rebounds, two fouls. He didn't have a block tonight, but three steals, three turnovers overall. Josiah Mays, four points, one rebound tonight, one steal. Chris Clay, five points, three assists, three steals. Um, Presley, Mark Presley, one assist, did not get in the scoring column tonight. Xavier Richards, one assist, one steal, did not get in the scoring column. Adrian Anderson Nelson, nine points, one assist, two rebounds, two fouls in the contest. Solomon Davis, eight points, seven rebounds, one steal. Love that line. Mm. Almost, you know, anytime that you get a guy who's almost flirting around with a double double, it's yeah. a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Braylon Bradshaw, five points, three rebounds, two steals. And that is kind of, oh, Jamari Moore, I missed him. Four points, one assist, three rebounds on the night. That's your stat line for the night. So if you had to choose a player of the game tonight, it's kind of tough. But I think you have, you're, you're, you're wise enough to get one. Who do you have? Zon Williams. Zon Williams is tonight's player of the game. He finished tonight with 16 points. He was not the high man, but every time he was on the floor, he contributed, mm -hmm. he controlled the tempo, and made the money play every time you needed it. Yeah, yeah, and that, like I said, to me, that's the that's the one thing that I liked about his game, even last year, you know, when he had to step up when he was a primary player before football players came out. and um, But today he, he played more as he tried to get his players involved, you know, he did the back little backdoor uh, pass to Clay, try to get a three-point shot, smiling at him. I mean, encouraging him, being that being that 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 voice on the floor. That just kind of some things that that impressed me. I liked about it. And you like a guy who can play with the ebbs and flows of the game because yeah. sometimes you don't need everybody to be a star. You need somebody to be a glue guy. Chance Davis has has historically been that guy for the team. Absolutely. So. Now having Zahn at 100%, you know, I can't wait to see the Falcon fan base and look forward to making that call on that game. But we're going to wrap things up tonight. Uh, again, tonight, want to thank all our sponsors for tonight's game overall. Sunbeam Family Services, the Millwood and Richmond Foundation, First Security Bank, A-plus Lawn Services, Big O's Pork and Dreams, Chris and Christy Harrison of Heritage Funeral Home, David Threats Hair Cafe, Cosmetology School, Wing Supreme, Narissa Berry Insurance Agency, Love Student of the Month, Super Prep and Perry Publishing and Broadcasting. You've been listening to Mill with Falcon Basketball brought to you tonight by Director of Operations, A. Shannon Hayes, and I am Maurice Prince. It's brought to you by SSM Health at St. Anthony and Love's Travel Stops and Country Stores. Have a great night, folks. <laughs>